ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Hey, what is... Sorry. Tuesday, May 14th. It is 7.32 p.m. Good evening, everyone. My name is Christian Klein. I am the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals, and I am calling this meeting of the board to order. I would first like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, so members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, Patrick Hanlon. Here. Venkat Hulley. Here. Uh, Daniel Riccadelli. Here. Elaine Hoffman. Here. And Adam LeBlanc. Here. Good to have you with us. Uh, Roger DuPont is unable to join us this evening. Uh, from the town, we have Colleen Ralston, our zoning assistant. Here. And I don't believe we have um, anyone from the legal department. I they know they sometimes like to join, but we're in the middle of town meeting, so they may not be here tonight. Um, then appearing for docket number 37887 70 Robbins Road with Andrew and Janet Sparks. Here. Great to have you with us. Uh, appearing for docket 3781 165 Franklin Street. We have uh, Kristen Gerano and Jim Risling. Here. Good Here. to have you with us. Uh, appearing for docket 3794 57 Beacon Street. We have Karen Kelleher. Here. I think my contractor, Michael Daniel, is also joining. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, appearing for docket 3795 36 Peabody Road. We have Ian Jessen and Eliza Hatch. Yep, we're here. Great. Good to have you with us. And then appearing for docket 3796 49 Valentine Road, we have Brian and Elizabeth Crowley. Here. Hello. Hey, great. Good to have you with us as well. <clears throat> so this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent with an act making appropriations for the fiscal year 2023 to provide for supplementing certain existing appropriations and for certain other activities and projects signed into law on March 29, 2023. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2025 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location, so long as they provide adequate alternative access to, public, to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference, others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you your screen name or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website, unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as Monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. The first part of our meeting, um, the administrative items. So uh, moving on to administrative items, these items relate to the operation of the board and as such will generally be conducted without input from the general public. The board will not take up any new business on prior hearings, nor will there be the introduction of any new information on matters previously brought before the board. Um, <clears throat> so the item two on our agenda is the vote on the approval of the decision for 529 Summer Street. 
Uh, so this was a, a decision written by uh, Mr. Hanlon, distributed to the board for comment uh, and a final draft issued later this afternoon. Are there any additional comments in regards to the written decision for uh, 529 Summer Street? Being none, the chair will accept a motion to approve the written decision for 529 Summer Street. Mr. Chairman, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. A second from the board? Second. Thank you, Mr. Holly. There's a vote of the members who voted on the at the hearing. Um, Mr. Dupont is not with us. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That is approved. That brings us to item three on the agenda, which is the approval of the decision for 30 Mayflower Street. Uh, this was a decision that was again written by Mr. Hanlon, distributed to the board for questions and comments. Uh, final draft issued this afternoon. Are there any additional questions or comments in regards to the written decision for 30 Mayflower Road? Mr. Chair. Seeing none. That, uh, yes, sir. I just noticed that uh, my name is spelled wrong on the front sheet. So as long as everyone's comfortable with that. Uh, maybe we can just correct it before I sign. We can, make, we can make an administrative change there. Thanks for Thank joining. You. Okay, so then the chair would ex uh, accept the motion to approve the written decision for 30 Mayflower Road with the um, administrative correction. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. And a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Holly. Uh, roll call vote of those voting on the original. Uh, Mr. Dupont again is not present. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Sorry, aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. And Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Thank you. All that is approved. Brings us to item four on our agenda this evening. <clears throat> Before opening a public hearings, here's some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves for themselves and make their presentation to the board. I'll then request that members of the board ask what questions they have on their proposal. After the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. And at the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. Please note that any vote taken at this hearing will be preliminary until the written decision is approved by the board at a subsequent meeting. All votes will be conducted by roll call vote. And under state law, no decision granted by this board shall take effect until a certified copy of the final decision has been filed with and recorded at the Middlesex South Registry of Deeds in Cambridge by the applicant. So with that, um, I will note we do have uh, five items on our agenda this evening. We will take them in the order uh, they are presented on the application. If you are one of the uh, latter cases, um, I anticipate it will take at least half an hour per case. So um, I encourage you to keep a lazy ear on. But uh, if you have other things, um, you can check back in with us. <coughs> Excuse me. So with that. Uh, again, turning to item four on our agenda, which is docket 3788, 70 Robbins Road. Um, I know this is listed as a continuance, um, but this is the that was due to an absence at the prior hearing. And so we are hearing this for the first time. So with that, I would ask the applicants to please introduce themselves and tell us what they would like to do. Yeah, hi, my, uh, my name's Andrew Sparks. I'm uh, representing my wife also, and we've got um, on the phone our, our architect who we've been working with, Ka Catherine McPhail, and our builder, Walter Russell, Home Sweet Home. And um, we are interested in expanding our living room to uh, take over uh, the front porch uh, to, to give us a little more space. We've got, we got a couple kids and, uh, you know, Classic Arlington property here, and uh, we we're hoping to um, kind of embark on this project earlier in the year. And now, um, you know, it may slide a little bit, but it's it's something we're interested in doing to our house to increase the interior living space. For that, um, did you have someone who wanted? Did you say you had a your architect with you? Hey, Catherine, you're muted. Oh, there you go. No. Hi. Um, 
Sure. It's my understanding is that uh, enclosing a front porch that's within the setbacks is allowed mm -hmm. by special permit under what is it, under section 5.3.9 D, I believe. So basically they're on Robbins Road. I think you all have the plans and I had taken some images of other um, properties on that street that have enclosed their front porch. It's fairly common around Arlington and that area. So um, we feel it won't be detrimental to the neighborhood and that it's in keeping with the other houses that are around. It's preserving the uh, same massing that was already there essentially, but building, you know, obviously enclosing the porch and changing the roof line. Um, so it's going from a hip roof to a shed roof. Um, that is, we feel improved aesthetics, but also easier to build and easier to insulate. Thank you. Um, Colleen, can you give, um the architect, uh, the ability to uh, share her screen. And I would ask if you could share the drawings with the with the board. Sure. You all set. All right, let me get that up. Uh, okay, sorry. I have too many of the notice <clears throat> notices open. All right, um, there we go. All right, so this, you can all see my screen. Yep. Hey, whoops, I assume. Okay. Um, no, I can't see my screen. So we're looking at the note at the um, there you the go. application. There we go. There's the drawings. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to get to the other. This isn't my usual program. Okay, so this is their living room, and this is their existing porch. It goes all the way across the front of the house, and they are proposing to enclose this part of the porch, not the whole porch. This will still be open with the same stair and entry point. And uh, let's see. These are the other, so this is a rendering of what the front would look like. This is uh, the area that where it is, it's on the hill on Robbins Road, almost up to Gray Street. Um, these are some other houses along Gray Street that have, I mean, the Gray Street, uh, along um, Robbins Road that haven't closed their front porch. So they're very similar in size types of houses probably built around the same, roughly the same time. And um, this is removing this part of the porch and the where the ceiling on the whole porch, because obviously they'll replace the roof on the whole thing. Um, this is the existing elevation. And this, um, this is what I just showed you. This would be the proposed elevation. And we have a little section there for the building department. And the side elevation. So it's a pretty simple project. And we're trying to keep in, you know, in keeping with what's what's there for the most part. Thank you. I think that's that's about it. And did you have the the site plan as well? Yeah, let me find that here for you. Site plan, amen or something. Um, all right, hold on a second. I need to get that off. Yeah, no worries. Um, site plan, road, legal. Oh, okay. It's in my download, so hold on a second. Um, Sorry, I'm really, I'm getting, now I'm getting all flustered. No worries. Let's just pretend I'm here by myself. <laughs> um, all right, where did I, where did I just, I just had it a second ago, then it disappeared. So where's that? I'm covering this up. Problem is it keeps going under all your bases there. Okay, I will get it. Ah, oh, finally. Okay, here we go. So this is the existing. Um, plot so we there. still have the 
Oh, sorry. Link man. Yeah, no worries. I swear I use my computer all day, every day, but anyway. Um, okay, so this is the plot plan. It's uh, Robbins Road, Gray Street is is up here. It's on the, this is the corner of Gray and Robbins over here. It's pretty typical Arlington setup where you have the existing garage at the back of the property and, and um, the house toward the front of the property. Um, the existing is 17.5 uh, feet. The porch is, and uh, it's 10.2 to the side lot line. So we'd be maintaining those two setbacks. And so the, are you maintaining, are you keeping the existing porch and just infilling or are you rebuilding it? Well, I mean, technically we're probably rebuilding most of it in the end. I think keeping the floor okay. joists, but we need to rebuild the roof um, and infilling wall as you say so for the most part it's going to be I mean, but it's not it's, shifting at all on the property no it's not shifting it's in the exact footprint okay good are there thank you for sharing that um are there questions from the board I'm sorry. mr chairman mr hanlon um <clears throat> the um is there is there anything going in the area where the living room is going to take over is there anything sort of porch like that is going to continue to be there or is this really just indistinguishable from what you'd have if you'd built a living room there from the very beginning well, right now the plan is to have it be um more house like than porch like i mean instead of having let's say um columns like pilasters or some other yeah. configuration like that. It is not right now planned to be like that. They prefer to have it look like the rest of the house, but we do have the windows in the same place as they are right now, but just moving out to the exterior wall. Um, can you, for the play, the, I, I know that there are at least a couple of places that you've shown and that I have seen as we've gone out there um, where porches have been enclosed. Do you know when that happened? I don't actually know when that happened. Um, there once it was a time I understand it where that could be done, or we, where the building department decided that that could be done as a matter of right. So I'm not under. I don't really recall giving special permits for those since the zoning bylaw changed to make this a special permit use. So I'm not quite sure what a sort of a pre precedent they were. Obviously, the reason we made it the town meeting made it a special permit use was to was because they didn't. They were not comfortable with the sort of automatic you get your porch then you claim that the house has gotten bigger by virtue of the porch and then you change the porch to the part of the house that that was a that was not exactly what it was we were looking to to have uh, when town meeting did this um and i I'm, but i'm wondering even apart from that to what the actual if you look up and down the street, do you have any idea what the actual setbacks are? To what degree do houses generally conform with the front yard setback required under the bylaw, or to what extent the uh, they're more or less than that? Do you have an uh, Do you have any sense of that? Well, I did ask the surveyor to to measure those when he was out there for me, so that we could see if there was, you know, because there is that issue of being um, in conformity with the rest of the neighborhood and they were a little they were within their setback but right at the setback so they were about two and a half feet back at least so they're 17 and a half from they have a 17 and a half front setback right now and the other houses were more than that but not much more than that but within would and did they see the the setback here is what 25 feet or i, I think, think it's, it's 20, 20. 20. Is it 20 feet or 25 feet? Let me see. Um, okay. All right. I just, I, I'm, I'm going to struggle a little bit in this case because it seems to me that what, what was happening before this became a special permit use 
was that by virtue of building a porch, which we've granted lots of permissions to do as projections into minimum front yards, mm -hmm. and we often have stressed the openness of the porch to the outside and the way in which it commit it contributes to the vibrancy of the community and conversations back and forth and so forth. And to then turn it around and and uh, and and close it and make it a part of the living space of the house undermines part of the reason why it is the special permit was would have been granted for it to begin with. Mm -hmm. And there's a range, obviously, of things. Sometimes porches just have basically screens and windows, and they still are pretty much communicating from the outside. And sometimes they're there. Sometimes there's unconditioned uh, area where they kind of are a hybrid inside outside sort of thing. But the extreme is when you just turn them into part of the house and you're getting and you're close to that extreme. And it seems to me that that it's part of the purpose of this provision of the bylaw to be skeptical about that sort of thing. So one thing that would move me to some extent is if, as a matter of fact, the act, it wouldn't it wouldn't affect much the the average actual setback on from the street in other words it, it may be they're getting there because of a porch but because of a lot of other non-conformities uh it's not really out of out of place that that would make some difference to me right. um but i have to just sort of say that i'm a little bit concerned with undermining the integrity of the front yard setbacks right. uh, by having this this kind of thing continue in, in quite this way would you feel um more comfortable with it if it read more like a porch if the windows were more vivid. yeah i think it to me it's a it's really a kind of i mean it's all coming off something that makes a special permit use out of out of a projection into the minimum yard and projections were always thought of as something that is sort of house-like but not completely house-like and porches are like that and there's obviously a continuum and the more it's kind of still like a porch the more it seems to me to be in keeping with the bylaw and to the extent to which it's entirely being domesticated and becoming the part of the living space of the house so that it just is as if you expanded the living room, yeah. the more I have a little heartburn about. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Are there other members of the board with questions? around seeing none um with that i will go ahead and open the meeting for public comment um so public questions and comments will be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments members of public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You will be called upon by the chair. You'll be asked to give your name and address, and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair, and please remember to speak clearly. For anyone wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, the chair will allow those wishing to speak for the first time to be called upon first. And once all public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed for this hearing. And the board and the staff will do our best to uh, display any documents that uh, members of the public wish to address. So with that, if there is anyone from the public who wishes to speak to 70 Robbins Road, um, if you could please uh, either digitally raise your hand using the, re uh, the button on the reactions tab, or if you're on the phone, you can dial star nine. Do not see any members of the public. We have someone in the waiting room. Are there any members of the public who wish to address the hearing for 70 Robbins Road? Going once, going twice. Seeing none and seeing no one waving in their Zoom window, we'll go ahead and close the public comment period for 70 Robbins Road. So what that brings back to the board. So this is a request to enclose um, <clears throat> a portion of the existing front porch um, on the house at 70 Robbins Road. This is a, a property in, I believe, in the R1 district. Um, 
So it would typically have to have a 25 foot setback. Um, I was wrong about that, sorry. No, not at all. Um, and it, the current distance from the porch to the property line is 17.5, uh, where it's 24.6 to the house itself. Um, this was advertised as a variance, uh, um, but as we as we were discussing, uh, Section 539D um, in the zoning bylaw states that porches, decks, steps, and landings in the required setback are not considered to be within the foundation wall and may not be enclosed, extended, or built upon except by special permit. And as, as Mr. Hanlon had noted before, this was added uh, to the zoning bylaws be in order to uh, require a special permit be issued uh, rather than uh, porches being allowed to be filled in by right um, as had been done prior to that. Um, so Mr. Hanlon, um, so do you feel that this is something that the, the board can consider as a special permit or do you have more concerns? Um, excuse me. I my feeling is that the um, legally it can be considered as a special permit if we find that it uh, that when you apply the requ the requirements of section three point three point three um, that that it meets those uh, criteria. The I I have not been taking the view that. Uh, somehow this is outside the special permit authority that it was established when the bylaw was was amended, uh, if, if only because that might imply that we'd go back to the bad old days where this could be done by as a matter of right. Um, I do think that a significant issue for me in applying Section 3.3.3 .3 is whether this undermines the purposes of the zoning bylaw. Uh, which is where I am, but that is not a matter of the availability of the special of a special permit in principle in this kind of situation. The question is whether or not uh, it meets the criteria that uh, are set forth for our evaluating uh, special permit applications. Um, if the board. <clears throat> was to consider adding a condition um, to sort of indicate that the, the portion of the porch that is being enclosed um, would remain, uh, would be, would continue to be considered outside the foundation wall of the building, which would then mean it can't be built upon except by special per by further special permit. My, my problem is just with turning the porch into a living room. Mm -hmm. I I think that a porch could continue to be a porch. It does somewhat undermine the reason why we sometimes give special permits to allow them. Um, but still, you walk up and down the street, you see lots of porches. In fact, one of the ones that uh, Ms. McPhail showed us is one that sort of retains its porch-like character, and it hasn't been really incorporated into the house. Um, and Mike, I think, I mean, the... Ms. McPhail did sort of suggest that while it's a second, it's second choice for the applicant that they could consider something that retains something of the character of a porch there without, without making this basically indistinguishable from extending the house into the front yard, and uh, and I would be, you know, if that were done by condition or revision of the plan, I would be willing to. Uh, to back off a little bit on this, but I, I don't think I would be able to vote for this uh, in the way in which it's uh, it's set forth today. Again, the underlying issue is undermining the purpose of the zoning bylaw by e effectively allowing the house simply to be extended into the protected front yard. Could I make a quick comment here? Um, Please, Mr. Yeah. Sparks. Yeah, I appreciate Mr. Hanlon's sentiments and, you know, what you're trying to preserve here. I think, um, you know, we're aware the house was built in 1926 or so. And, uh, you know, a couple of things that have maybe changed since then are uh, that make it um, sort of not as appealing to uh, spend time on our front porch are that, you know, how steep the hill is and the fact that there are cars going up there. 
frequently and and you know accelerating quickly up the hill and hitting the brakes you know right at the intersection at gray street because of how how busy the traffic is there so there's a lot of street noise and the other thing that we have to deal with is uh we've got a motorcycle dealership on mass ave right around the corner and so you know whenever someone takes a motorcycle on a test drive it seems like they come up our road and so there's uh I would say, like you know, compared to other streets in the town, perhaps there's uh, uh, there's a lot of road noise, and that's um, you know that's one of the reasons we really haven't spent more time there, and why when we do spend time outside, we spend it in the back. And so um, when we look at you know considering these expansions, we kind of lean more towards the front of the house to do that. So uh, yeah, I, I guess I'd appreciate any sort of special consideration about you know, the street we're on and which part of the street and some of those challenges that um, that we have here. Thank you for that, Ms. McPhail. So I just have a, um, a question about if you would find connecting the porch or enclosing the porch and connecting to the living room, would it be acceptable if it were a heated, still a heated area with, uh, let's say, a, a large opening between the two, um, but more porch-like details in the porch part of it, meaning maybe more windows or some, um, pilasters or something else that's reflective of porch porchness if it were me i wouldn't i wouldn't be hung up on heating it seems to me that the winter is the winter and and that would be that would be uh that would be fine okay. i mean obviously you'd, you'd have to be able to put in the insulation and do what you do to if you wanted to condition the room but but right. i wouldn't i wouldn't think of that as being a barrier to approval Okay, so I didn't know if you built with just adjacent, kind of an adjacent porch room that was open to the living room, basically. So I'm, yes, I, I think that's correct. I, I, you know, one of the things I'm worried about is that we've had all these uh, these opinions where we've gone ecstatic about how wonderful it is to have porches and people who talk to the their neighbors and so on and so forth. And, you know, it would be a little bit harder to keep granting those permissions to all those other people if we see them three years later making that their living room. I would say or I mean, 26 look, years later too. I mean, you're right. I understand. Any for other opinions from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. Cadelli. <clears throat> you know, I do, I really appreciate, you know, um, what Mr. Hanlon explained and I, you know, I, I agree, but I also, I do wonder, um, since since we know the history of where this uh, stipulation came from in the in the bylaws that says that it it is not allowed except by a special permit, you know if if this um, were a group of people who did not know why that provision was placed in here this way, we would just look at the special permit criteria, and and that way, uh, I feel that this is more straightforward for me. Um, and I think the you know the only piece that that I you know really would would be a big consideration is the integrity of the neighborhood um, uh, portion of that special permit criteria. And you know I think you know from my perspective this feels like it fits in with the neighborhood. It still retains a little porch and uh, extends the house in in part a part of the of the building. So. Uh, Maybe a slightly opposing view, but mostly just because I think the um, I think I'm taking a na more narrow approach to how I'm considering uh, this expansion. So, hey, thank you. Are there other members of the board? <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chair. It's happened. Mr. Chair. Yep. Go, go right ahead. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Lincoln. Sorry. I'm getting a, I, yes. It's possible my internet connection is unstable, um, but I'll try and make a comment anyway, um, which is that. <laughs> Um, I I think I am in agreement um, with Mr. Riccadelli that uh, this, especially because 
this uh, does still retain some porch um, in a way that the scale of what's being enclosed um, does really feel harmonious with the, the scale of other porches on the street. Um, that makes me, you know, more inclined to support it. Thank you. Excuse me. Um, so the what the board then has before it, um, so we have a re the request to enclose this porch of the porch. Um, we had discussed briefly sort of the thought of maybe we would, um, if the calligraphy of it was a little bit different, um, that it might, uh, as, as Mr. Hanlon said, it would be a little bit more porch-like. Um, so one, th one thought I had had is if the, so the main part of the house, the shingles are all just, the, the shingles butt at the corners. Um, but if on this front portion where it's enclosed, if there were corner boards instead um, at the corners, it would at least sort of still have some of that appearance of where the columns used to be and would you know set it off a little bit differently. Uh, than the rest of the house and also there's a header that goes across the top of the the opening for the porch maybe if that line could carry across it would sort of make it feel like it's all one piece rather than sort of a portion of the house with a small porch attached if that would be something that would be amenable i can i can definitely see that happening it's not my porch but i think that would look i think that would look pretty we could we could do some details, maybe a sill that goes all the way across at railing, what would be a railing height or something that reads more as a railing or something. Mm -hmm. I think that would sort of help to make it feel like it's an enclosed porch rather than a, you know, a, an, an addition that's, that's on the front of the house. Um, so with that then um there's the so the this enclosure would require a special permit from the board uh special permits are in section 333 of this of our local bylaws as controlled by state law um there's a series of uh uh findings that the board is required to make um in this regard and the um, applicant has provided uh language um in that regard so i'll just go through those. Um, <clears throat> so first is that the requested use is listed in the table of use regulations is allowed by special permit in the district. And so under section 539D, uh, a enclosure of, any, of a porch is allowed uh, within the setback by the granting of a special permit. Um, explain why the requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Um, as it stated here, the additional living space created from the front porch will allow a growing family to comfortably stay in their home. Um, this does also allow for an orderly expansion of uh, uh, property values and tax um, tax values within the town, which is um, desirable for the town. Explain why the requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. Uh, there would not be an increase in traffic congestion or any impairment to pedestrian safety. Uh, I would also note that the, the side with the open porch is the side where the driveway is. And so that will, um, again, make sure that those sight lines are maintained. Um, explain why the requested use will not overload any public water drainage or sewer system or any other municipal systems to such extent the, that the requested use and development in the media area uh, may cause hazards, et cetera. Uh, so there'll be no change in the current usage uh, of the property and would not create an additional burden on municipal systems. Um, the area of this addition does not include any uh, systems apart from electrical. And so this would not be uh, causing undue uh, burden on the existing systems. Describe how any special regulations for the use as may be provided in the zoning bylaw, including but not limited to provisions of section eight are fulfilled. Um, so this project would not result in the need for any special regulation. Um, the only uh, special regulation is the this 539D, which is allowing this um, this change by special permit. Um, and then explain why the requested use will not impair the integrity or character of the district or adjoining districts. Um, 
And so the applicant had provided that the 70 Robbins Road was built in the mid-1920s, along with many other similar houses on Robbins Road in the greater neighborhood. Houses typically include a front porch. Many have been enclosed over the 100 years since they were built. Two others on Robbins Road have successfully incorporated porch areas into living spaces at numbers 36 and 42. Aesthetically, an enclosed porch is in keeping with the modifications to these 1920s houses and will be maintaining the current massing. Uh, the roof line will be modified from an existing hip roof to a single plane shed roof for the simplicity of building and insulating as well as improved aesthetic. And then explain why the requested use will not by its addition to the neighborhood cause an excess of that use that would be detrimental. Um, the pros project will not cause any detrimental excesses. This is an R1 in an R1 district. Uh, single family residential is what the, the bylaw anticipates will be constructed in this area. And so it, this would not be um, an odd use. Are there any uh, questions or comments about the possible findings? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon? Uh, I just wanted to, the, for me, the basically the finding, the basic finding is whether this is consistent with the integrity of the zoning district under F. Uh, yep. And uh, and there's there, there's a, certainly a reason for a dis difference of opinion on that, and I understand where uh, Ms. Hoffman and, and Mr. Rickardelli are coming from. Um, I will say that if the applicant were prepared to live with a condition that uh, would say that in effect, notwithstanding the existing plan. Uh, the applicant will include design elements such as those described at the hearing in order to uh, uh, preserve a more porch-like appearance of the addition, uh, I would find it possible to vote for this. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Um, so should the board uh, vote to approve, there are three standard conditions which the board would attach um, to the decision. The first is that the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There should be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, the second is that the building inspector is hereby notified there to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time they determine that violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under Section 33.1 of the Zoning Bylaw and under the provisions of Chapter 40, Section 21D of the Massachusetts General Laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with Section 3.1. Uh, number three is that the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to the special permit grant. Um, and then there were two additional that we had discussed. Uh, one was the one that Mr. Hanlon had just read. Um, they notwithstanding uh, the submitted uh, drawings. Mr. Hanlon, did you have this written? Yeah, but it was only sketched. I was. I, I'll. I'll try, and you can maybe edit it on the fly. Notwithstanding the uh, present drawings. The applicant will include design elements such as those discussed in the hearing in order to preserve a porch-like appearance for the addition. Just to comment, I did I did want to not have something that provided flexibility so that, you know, it may turn out mm -hmm. that the very best solution isn't the one that you and uh, Ms. McPhail discussed, but uh, I wanted to, so there should be flexibility, but the purpose is clear, and I think we all understand it. Okay. Thank you. So that would be number four. And then I would recommend also that we, we note that the area of the enclosed porch shall not be considered within the foundation wall of the building, and the open portion of the porch shall remain open. That would be number five. Are there any additional questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, the chair would entertain a motion in regards to 70 Robbins Road. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I move that the uh, board approves uh, this application subject to the conditions that, uh, the five conditions that the uh, chair has read into the record. Thank you, Mr. Hanley. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Holly. Uh, then with that, I'll do a vote of the 
board. Um, as I know, Mr. Dupont is not here. Mr. Hanlon? Yes. Mr. Holly? Yes. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. <laughs> Ms. Hoffman? Aye. And the chair votes aye. The special permit for 70 Robbins Road is approved with the stated conditions. Uh, thank you all very much. And um, we will at the subsequent at the next our next hearing, which is May 28th, the intention would be then to vote on the final written decision, um, at which point that the uh, that can be submitted to the town clerk uh, to start the 20 day appeals period. Um, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then returning to the, our agenda this evening is um, number five, uh, docket 3781-165 Franklin Street. It's the continuance of a, an earlier hearing. I would ask the applicant to reintroduce themselves and uh, tell us what changes they are proposing uh, relative to the last time they appeared here. Good evening, I'm the owner, Kristen Germano, and I'm here with my general contractor, Greg Zelanskis, and my architect, Jim Riesling. Um, we've done some modifications and um, I'm gonna hand it right over to Jim to get started. Oh, thank you, Kristen. Uh, thank you, good evening. Uh, James Riesling of LR Designs. And um, yes, uh, we've um, worked on the massing of the um, of the rear addition and um, brought you know developed something that is basically uh, one and a half stories that then tapers down to uh, a full story with a, key, a cathedral ceiling and um, we would be happy to walk through it. Yeah, Colleen, if you could go ahead and give them um, the ability to share, I think she has already. Oh, per perfect. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, this is the, a comparison of the uh, previously proposed site plan, the, the most recently previously proposed site plan, and, and the current. And so we've, again, pulled back from the rear property line, reconfigured the building, we've eliminated the garages, and um, Re, you know, rework the massing. Um, this is our, our figure ground study that, that shows us um, in line with the neighbor's garage. I know there's a lot of concern about the, the length and the size of the um, addition. Neighbors um, were concerned about the length as well as the height. Um, <clears throat> so we... Uh, Let's jump ahead to the elevations because I think that tells more of a story. So on this page, we have um, three proposals. Um, you know, our very first one, which was more like uh, an attached house. And then our last proposal, um, which was also, um, you know, one and two third story. And then now we've, we've, we've come up with this, which is, um, uh, a one and a half story piece here, and then a one story back here. Mm -hmm. um, we have a ridge line on that component of the building of uh, 26 feet, eight inches, or call it 26 feet, nine inches. And then the rear component, which is a cathedral ceiling of, um, of a great room is uh, 22 foot eight. And these are to the ridge of uh, gable roofs. And then if we look at the rear elevation, as we come around um, the whole the whole second story of, of the mid portion of the building is, is under this gable roof. And then the rear is this, um, you know, one story with a cathedral ceiling. So we, we had hoped that, you know, we um, addressed the concerns. I, I, I do know there was a concern about it looking like two houses. Um, I've, I have to admit, I find it difficult to not make it look like two houses and contend with what we learned at the historical commission and what they want the existing house in rear L to look like. So I, I think the concept of a, a telescoping house 
um, is a is a you know New England tradition, and I think um, there probably are variants found throughout Arlington. So I think at Telescoping House that sort of goes down to this this fine and, and terminating in this one story um, great room. Um, it seems like a reasonable approach. Could you take us through the the floor plans as well? Sure. Um, the front unit has not changed. Well, actually it has changed because we've gotten rid of the garage. So the mudroom is gone. The entrance is now, uh, well, the main entrance is the existing entrance and the fenestration is, was worked out with historical. And then there's a rear porch off the, the sort of parking court that brings you into the center of the house. And that, that includes a kitchen. The rear unit, um, you have a small rear porch here, um, or which would be their front entrance, main entrance, brings you into a stair hall, uh, a space with a dining room, living room, kitchen, and then, uh, oops, sorry, and a, a first floor suite, um, which includes, a, you know, a, a comfortable size bedroom and uh, ensuite bathroom and powder room. And then, oops. Um, the second floor includes two secondary bedrooms, a hall bath, and then another ensuite bath bedroom with a, a bathroom and, and walk-in closet. There's no attic space because that, that floor is under the roof. Um, the knee walls are at five feet. So, you know, technically this would meet Arlington's half story definition, although it's not typically applied to a to a second story. And again, the main house has, has not changed much on the second floor um, in that regard. And if you could go, just go back to the, the sort of the figure ground of the site as well. Yep. There we go. So, yeah, we're, we're showing the late, the latest three editions. So, so where we pulled it back and then pulled it back again. And now this is where we land today. <clears throat> um, our, our building coverage is at 21.9%. Um, well, well below the allowed, um, well below most of our neighbors. You know, um, I've I've described density in the past, and I think people have taken that to be a use density. But in terms of of house on the lot, house on the ground, I, I think it's it's still a very modest um, intervention. Thank you. Um... And so you said you had taken the so the garages are are gone which is sort of provided you some additional space you've been able and it aligns with the back edge of the garage on the adjacent property now yes approximately yes okay and that last bit um farthest from franklin street is a single story uh and then the remainder of it is you said somewhere between a floor and a half and two stories well, the the perimeter wall is a five foot knee wall. It it yeah. beats the Arlington definition of a half story in terms of area that's greater than seven feet. Okay, but it's at the second story level. It's not at the third story level. It's at the second story level. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's less than two. It's less than two full stories. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and it's it's not that's not an uncommon geometry, I guess, for a Greek revival house to have, uh, uh, you know, usually they would have been balloon framed. It would have been a cantilevered knee wall. This this would have to be figured out, but it's it's a it's a five foot knee wall at the perimeter. Okay. Thank you. Um, questions from the board. Uh, Mr. Chair. Ms. Hoffman. 
Could we just take a look back at the um, the total area figures? Mr. Islin? No. Yeah, here they are. Could you just zoom in on them a little bit? Sorry. Sure. Let me see. Uh, they moved all the icons. <laughs> Great, thank you. Ms. Wrestling, if I remember correctly, I think the initial proposal was around 8,000 gross square feet. Is that correct? I believe so, yes. Yes, I guess that was my question. I was just looking to confirm because um, it's obvious that the total has shrunk, you know, somewhat considerably. And I was just looking to get a sense of exactly how much. Other questions from the board? Mr. Cadelli? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I, I think um, more of a comment than a question, but I think, um, you know, uh, you guys have been to us uh, a couple of times now. So uh, just wanted to acknowledge that I think, you know, the telescoping nature of, of the house is sort of what we were, um, what we were kind of after uh, when we met last. And I think that that is successful and, you know, um, uh, looking forward to hearing what uh, the neighbors have to say, but hopefully that addresses some of their concerns. Thank you, Mr. Cadelli. Mr. Chair. Mr. LeBlanc. Uh, just kind of wanted to echo Mr. Riccadelli's comments a little bit. I, I had this a similar feeling looking through this. You know, I think they really took the knife to it and um, tried to really take to heart what we've been trying to say over the the you know previous hearings and what the um neighbors have been trying to say and i think they've come back to us with something that um feels more compromise um between all the different parties so um i appreciate all their their look at this and and really you know taking a really good stab at it this time thank you mitchell blank Any other questions from the board? If not, um, Mr. Wilson, if you can go ahead and stop the share, um, and I will go ahead and open the meeting for public comment. Uh, just reminded that public questions and comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. Um, if you would like to speak, you can digitally raise your hand using the button on the reactions tab, or if you're calling in, you may dial star nine. Uh, you'll be called upon by the chair, asked to give your name and address and given time for questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Um, and once all public questions and comments have been addressed, um, or I say we've reached the time of 9 p.m., uh, the public comment period will be closed on this hearing. So with that, um, we do have uh, members of the public wishing to address this application. So first, um, I would recognize uh, Ben Mangrum. So if you yeah. could go ahead and you. uh, unmute um, yourself, My please. name is Ben Mangrum, and I'm one of the abutters. I live at 37 Hamlet Street. Um, so I just I want to begin by thanking the zoning board for their thorough review of the uh, previous proposals. We've been at this for, I think, four, three or four months now. And I can only imagine how much time it takes to uh, review so many requests month after month. So thanks uh, for your work on behalf of the town and for giving also us the chance to um, provide input. So as was the case with the previous proposals, I don't feel that this current proposal is congruent with the, the neighborhood. I, I see it as a tweak, um, not as a substantial response to um, the concerns that we've raised. Uh, the proposed large addition doesn't take into the account uh, into account the concerns that we've raised. So, you know, I've offered to speak with Ms. Germano over email about these concerns, um, and she uh, only shared the plans that after they were finalized um, 
last week. So, you know, again, we weren't able to, to give input in the ways that we uh, uh, had requested previously. So I'll try to be quick in summarizing my main points of, of disagreement with the current proposal. So the first point is, again, that it's just a modest tweak. So we've gone from, in January, 8,000 square feet down to 7,000 square feet, which is not congruent with the surrounding properties um, in terms of mass or square footage. Um, and so the height and mass in the back of the lot, it's still incongruent with the surrounding properties. So we have lots of two-family homes around us, uh, but we have no two homes on a single property. Um, that's not what the surrounding properties are like. Um, so this would be a significant variance um, uh, from the neighborhood. And I just think that that would change the character of the neighborhood and, and would set a, a bad precedent. So that's really my second point, uh, uh, is that this approving this proposal would, would create a slippery slope. Um, so others have previously argued this point, but I just wanna say another word about it, that if the town were to allow for this significant expansion into the back of the lot, it sets a precedent for other properties on Franklin Street. So on, one, on page 115 of the meeting minutes, uh, we see an image that indicates how far back the property expansion would go. Uh, we just saw that a second ago. And so not only does the large expansion go much further back than the house next door, um, in terms of the actual living space, I realize that it's a, a, in line with a garage, but a garage is not a living space, right? So a, a garage could then just be added onto the back or something else later. Um, so, so in other words, it goes further back in terms of the living space than the property next door. But then um, if this were approved, it would set a precedent in which a developer could purchase other properties on Franklin Street and try to build just a bit further back. And so we have a kind of slippery slope in which we're changing the neighborhood um, uh, in really substantial ways. Um, so I think that approving this request would make it difficult to deny further requests for expanding further back onto other lots in Franklin Street. And this uh, just doesn't add additional housing, only additional square footage uh, in the neighborhood. So the last point I wanna make is just a personal appeal <laughs> uh, to the zoning board. Uh, that this large expansion would affect negatively my experience of my home. So uh, during our first meeting about this property back in January, I sent pictures uh, looking for my backyard. You can see those in the meeting notes on page 79 and page 80. Uh, and you can see how a two-story structure running past the garage on the other side of the property would really mar the skyline. And so this certainly affects me personally, but again, I think it's another example of how the proposal is incongruent with the neighborhood. So those are my points, um, and I request um, respectfully that the zoning board deny this appeal and not grant any further continuances. So thank you. Thank you. Um, next in our queue um, is John Donnelly. Hello, thank you again. Once again, I, um, I hope I'm not sounding like a broken record, but I'd again like to point to the zoning bylaws 5.4.1A3. Uh, this project is not in harmony with other structures in our neighborhood. There is no way anybody can point to another home in our neighborhood and say it's like it because it isn't. Um, I, I really feel that it's not in conformity with anything in our neighborhood going from what uh, Franklin Street down a parallel, and then all the way up to Phillips Street. If you walk the neighborhood, you can see that there's there's nothing like this, and um, you know that's that's a big concern for everybody in our neighborhood. Um, the project was asked by the board the last at the last meeting to try and pay attention to how it works with the rest of the neighborhood, and this uh, on page nine of the proposal is still. Not in not harmonious to any of these properties going again to parallel or to Phillips. Uh, most of the properties have great big backyards, uh, nice two family home right in the front, uh, not two one family homes. And I, I have to disagree with the fact that these don't seem like that. But when you look at page nine, it certainly looks like it. And um, I don't see anywhere in my neighborhood that that that's reflected other than in these drawings. Um, again, Mr. Hanlon last meeting referred to baby steps not sufficing at the last, at the last meeting. And it was my impression that we would um, take the footprint of the home and work with that because your mass, again, and I've learned a lot at these meetings and I thank the board for all you've done 
as well as Mr. Mangrum said, you know, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, but, you know, baby steps will not suffice. And to me, what they did from this drawing to the last drawing are baby steps. I don't see the original structure being much of anything other than a connection to two other fairly decent sized structures and then another home. So um, they're, they're not significantly different, which was a challenge issued by the board at the last meeting that these drawings be significantly different than we had at the last meeting. And looking at page nine, they're not. I, I can't see how they are. Um, the new proposal has a lot more volume than anything else in our neighborhood, in my opinion. Um, and it comes down, the whole thing to me comes down to several key repetitive issues. And again, I'm looking at page two and page nine of the proposal in particular. So page two shows uh, how far out this property is going to go. I don't see that as being significantly different to what it's been, at least at the last meeting. And, you know, they're chopping a little bit here and there, but 7,000 feet is a big, big building. And it's, it's all connected. So again, it doesn't fit in our neighborhood. Um, I learned a lot about mass and how uh, when I walk up and down the street now, I look at the two family homes that are there and I notice that the mass is all in the front of the house. It's not stretched way out back in a telescope form. I mean, I, I, it's not, there's nothing in our neighborhood like that. Um, the other thing I learned was ha about harmoniousness. And I think, you know, with our, with our neighbors working uh, very hard to get something into our neighborhood that will be harmonious. And this, to me, the way it stands on page nine is certainly not harmonious to any of the abutters or to the existing neighborhood, both down to Parallel Street and up to Phillips Street. Um, the last, uh, one of the last things I'll, I'll say is that I think back to what Lauren Ledger said at the last meeting and no one has been listened to was her quote, I believe. And I still believe that's very true. I haven't had no communication with anybody about this. I had no idea they were gonna chop down the beautiful willow tree that they chopped down on a Saturday last fall. I mean, uh, no communication about anything. And I did not receive any notes last, last meeting saying that, um, you know, we can meet with you tomorrow during the workday. So I didn't receive any of that. So, you know, I really feel like the board has listened to us, but the developer and the architect have not listened to the neighborhood. Um, I, and in closing, I would go back to my, my uh, topic of, and, and the whole uh, neighborhood's topic of this is a two family house. That was said at the first meeting way back when in January. And it's a two family house, but it's not two one family homes. Everything else on the street is a two family house, except for the little houses on Hamlet Street, which I happen to live in, one of them. But everything else has the mass up front and is a two family home. It's not one family home, a bunch of other rooms, and then another family. Um, that is it's, it's not harmonious to our neighborhood. And that's all I'd like to say. I'd ask the board to deny the special permit. And I thank you for all you've done. Thank you, Mr. Donnelly. Uh, next on our list uh, is uh, Steve Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, I, uh, I would uh, want to remind everyone here again that this is a historic home and there's some limitations on what can be done uh, which might be done with a typical home uh, where uh, you have to sort of work with uh, what I believe the historic district commission was was allowing or, or some such I remember some discussions like that from before uh, I guess I would uh, respectfully disagree with some of the comments that I've I've just heard I think this developer has gone quite a long way on trying to work with the concerns raised at repeated meetings uh, by the by the neighbors. The massing of the house now is is quite different than it was to my to my eye. 
the telescoping view, telescoping view of the home that was referred to by Mr. LeBlanc and Mr. Riccadelli, I think is a is a, a major change. It takes away some of the uh, concerns that were being made relative to second stories or, or large additions looking down upon the, the yards of the neighbors, um, which is why I, th I think the, the massing is so important in terms of trying to minimize it as, it as it moves back from the front. The mass of the house is in the front uh, and, and some in the middle and less in the back, uh, which I think is probably the only solution for what the applicant wants to do here I understand that the neighbors would like no change. I don't, I think that that is basically infringing on the rights of the developers to enjoy their home um, in the way that they would like. So it's they're trying to do a balancing here. And it, it seems to me that they've gone a long way with trying to work with the neighbor's concerns uh, as long as the answer is that they are allowed to do something, not nothing, which is sort of what it's sounding like to me over these many meetings. So I, I think this is a, I think this is a good change and a, definitely a, a step in the right direction. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, next on our list is Dan Ledger. Hi, uh, Lauren Ledger, 169 Franklin Street. Uh, we are next door. And uh, I actually took a tape measure outside today and uh, we're about 20 feet, our bedroom's about 20 feet from this unfinished building next door. Our kitchen windows, all of our living room windows all look at this unfinished building. We desperately want something to be built here. Uh, it's, it's a little unsightly the way it is now. And in many ways, this plan is just a huge improvement over what was in the house previously. And with every iteration, I think it really does get better, but it just seems like we're still uh, pretty far off than what I, what I thought I was hearing from the board at our last meeting that it's still, you know, when I envisioned what uh, this plan would look like, because I know we've had a lot of these meetings, I was envisioning much more of this backside of the unit being one story. And there is a portion of it, and it is a small improvement than what it is, but it just seems like we are going in such baby, baby steps each time that we do this. And, um, you know, when I see that this, it is still one and a half stories all the way back to kind of the midpoint of where our garage is, where our our house next door has been, uh, is just one story from that entire place that uh, is in red. Um, for their addition, it just, it still seems really out of place with um, what we see in the rest of the neighborhood. So, thank you. Anything? Thank you. Um, Ushwal Shrestha? Yeah. Hi, um, Ushwal Shrestha. 134 Webster Street. Um, I've been here the last couple of times as well, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak up again. Um, you know, again, don't want to sound like a broken record like one of the other neighbors said. Um, but the point that I, I wanted to emphasize was I thought the last time we met, there was uh, the talk about not adding a story at the back, which really kind of impacts the neighbors all around. And I do believe that the new um, new design still kind of um, is more than a story at the back. And I thought that was kind of the idea that was presented so that the the builders could go back and put, you know, put the thoughts in terms of how that can be designed. Uh, I did not think the new design kind of did that. And I I think while there's efforts to make changes, I don't think it goes uh, the wholesale change that we had kind of recommended the last time around. And 
like I want to resonate on one of the things that the earlier neighbor said in terms of baby steps. I think the the consensus it seemed in, the, in our last meeting was that something drastic had to happen in terms of the design, the size of the buildings, for for that this to be deemed uh, congruous with the rest of the houses in the neighborhood. Um, I, I don't think that has happened here. So. All in all, without getting into the other points in terms of how it impacts our family, which I've said the last couple of times, I do request the board to not approve this, this design at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then uh, I will go ahead uh, to Michael Saeed. We haven't heard from. Here comes my man. Hi, um, Michael Said, one thirty six Webster Street. We are the house in the back. We share the back fence uh, with uh, with the unit in question. Um, I I joined the meeting late because I I just came from work. Um, and I uh, really at the end of this meeting, I'm not I'm not sure what the process is if this can go forever, but just it feel like I don't know if this is strategy of just keep going until neighbors get busy and stop showing up or something. But I hope we land the plane. Um, so uh, I missed the first part, so I haven't seen the designs, but I have reviewed them over the last weekend, um, and. Uh, with the comment, every every design, every meeting, iteration, it looks like um, we're taking some of the back close to my unit and we're moving it in the middle. There is the original unit and the proposed unit. And every change is like taking a few feet from my fence and moving it on top of the middle, a few feet on top of the middle. So I really didn't have a lot of issue with how close they are because my neighbors across the driveways are kind of similar destination. My issue was the height. My The sunset exactly is where the house is. So increasing the height of this backyard blocks the sun or like two or three hours uh, towards the end of the day. So we'll be getting less sun in, in the backyard than in the back, back porch. And um, um, that at least my personal uh, issue with it, um, plus what folks have said, but we talked about privacy, we talked about density before, and um, and I think this is being repetitive, but my issues might be a little bit different than everyone else is the sun sets exactly where the house is. And um, this will impact us personally um, if we go two stories above, uh, above the fence or one story above the fence, I guess, which would be two stories. Um, Thanks for for listening. I I do uh, hope that you reject this and uh, and this will be the last of it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, uh, we have Diana Abitro. I'm sorry, your last name is cut off with dots. Um, no, no, but thank Diana. You, thank, you. thank you so much. Can you guys hear me? We can. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, I I am uh, living at 45 Hamlet Street. I'm about it uh, right behind uh, the, the building, uh, so very close to the driveway. So I, I think share uh, the feeling of the other neighbors because uh, we had discussed this uh, very frequently and we all were hoping for some, you know, dramatic change. And I think we all are very... Uh, much ready to have some building because I'm frankly kind of sick looking at this uh, kind of monster right behind my you know tiny yard. Um, so um, what I think my my biggest thing is that I was kind of hoping that uh, the building will be just much um, uh, shorter. It it really seems that the height of the middle portion now went significantly higher. Um, and uh, I also feel that uh, from 8,000 square feet to 7,000 square feet is actually not significant in my opinion, because 
I don't know whether you counted the garages, but now basically the cars will be outside and there will be no garage, uh, you know, next to the building. So I will be brief. Uh, I just, uh, I was really hoping for some significant change. I don't think this was a significant change. And I think as many of the other people felt, it really does not seem to fit into the neighborhood. So thank you so much. And I hope you will not approve it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, ben Mangrum, I believe, raised hand for a second time. Hi, hello. Yes, this is Ashley Mangrum. I live at 37 Hamlet Street. I'm um, Ben's spouse. Um, I'd just like to join my voice with my neighbors here and would like a brief word of explanation to say I don't feel that the neighbors are being belligerent and I don't want any I hope none of you guys are receiving that it is because we have to live with whatever is we're living with what currently is and we will live with whatever is built and we will live hopefully in our tiny little brick cottage for a very long time that I would like to by comparison um, I know that Hamlet Street and the abutting properties are not the same as the properties on Franklin Street moving around to parallel, our, our places are much smaller, but our house is 1700 square feet and that's being generous. And 1700 square feet for a family of five that we currently live in is much, much different um, than 7,000 square feet. Um, two houses, I get, I still, I understand that, but in my mind, it helps me to conceive of the size of the structure when I compare it to the size of ours. And again, that's just huge. Um, it just feels really large and we have to live with what I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be a beautiful structure, but we have to live with that for a very long time. And so I, I join with my neighbors in requesting something different. Thank you board for your time and for your listening ears. Well, thank you very much. Um, and then we have, uh, John Donnelly, I believe, for a second time. Thanks. I'm sorry. I won't take up any time, really. I'm usually pontificating, but not right now. I'm just going to say this will ruin all of the neighbors' backyards from Webster Street all the way around Hamlet and down Franklin. So uh, this project is too big, doesn't fit in the neighborhood. And again, I would like to say the mass is at the front, but it's also two-thirds of the way back. The mass is not all at the front on this project, and I have to disagree that it is. So there's a lot of, there's another family going to be living two thirds of the way back. Um, that's not mass at the front, as far as I'm concerned. So that's all I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, I believe that is all of the hands I see up. Um, are there any other members of the public who wish to address this hearing? Uh, this is the, the hearing for 165 Franklin Street. Last chance. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I will close the public comment for um, the hearing on 165 Franklin Street. Uh, so with that, we we'll turn back to the board. Um, so what the board has before it, this is a request for a large addition under 542B6. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this is, I believe, the fourth hearing, the at least the third or at least the third, possibly the fourth hearing on this um, application. And uh, the, the primary questions uh, for the board um, so in order for a large addition to be approved, um, the board needs to find that the alteration or addition is in harmony with other structures and uses in the vicinity. And in making that determination, the board is to consider the dimensions and setbacks in relation to abutting structures and uses, and to consider conformity with the purposes of the bylaw. Um, and so we've uh, heard from uh, various members of the of the public uh, who you've heard from uh, before uh, speaking about this project. Um, this site is a little bit unique in that it does have so many butters, um, but that's because it is a long, narrow lot. 
um, and it is immediately you know one property in from the uh, from the edge of a side street, and that does um, <clears throat> change a little bit the, the the character of that piece of property. Um, I know the at the previous hearing, um, the board had had been very vocal about uh, what it was hoping to see. Um, uh, from this application, we were hoping that it would be, uh, you know, sort of a, a dramatic change from from what we had seen. Uh, what we do have, we do well. It's not a drastic change. It is a considerable change. Um, there have been a bunch of uh, decisions made to to sort of bring it farther closer to the street, uh, farther out of the back of the lot, and to um, make some attempts to to sort of make the back portion of the project lower. Um, one question I did have for the um for the owner uh so we had talked last time um that the each of the two units is a four bed it's a full four bedroom unit um and i wanted to see if you had and at the time i had sort of you know forward had you considered reducing the number of units in order to reduce the scale of the building um, given the size and location um, and so I just wanted to, to again, ask that question of you, um, did you consider changing these from four bed, from two, four bedroom units, um, in order to try and, uh, you know, get at some of the massing questions we had had? And if not, sort of what were the, um, what was sort of the process that led to the decision to keep it that way? Well, we consider everything, um. I know there are four bedrooms, um, not large bedrooms. Um, we try to keep the primary, obviously, as comfortable as possible. The fourth bedroom tends to be used as an office. So you, we like to keep that because that's usually where it ends up as an office. Um, that's really the consideration there. And certainly the unit at the back has two suites, one at the first floor level, one at the second floor level, and then two smaller bedrooms on the upper level. So it really, um, the office would sort of be one of the, the two smaller bedrooms on the second floor because it doesn't really seem like a suite would be something that someone would use as an office. Not normally the suite. Usually the smallest bedroom tends to be used as mm -hmm. the office. Um, I just like to keep that room in there. I think it's it's just needed, especially today with everyone working from home. They really need that space. Right, right. And the the second suite um, seemed like a concession to the office that we did eliminate, where there was like a parlor office room on the first floor. So. And then the two bedrooms are smaller under the roof, so it seemed like a concession to have two ensuite bedrooms. Um, mm -hmm. Also allows for one floor living um, for for someone down the line. Questions, comments from the board? Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Hoffman. Um, I just have a couple comments about area that I I think might, to me, it's helpful to think about. Maybe everyone else already has this in mind, but um, as I have it, the existing structure is 4,102 square feet gross. The original proposed addition was 4,000 114. The current proposed addition is 2,904. So that's a 30% reduction in the size of the addition than what was originally proposed. I consider that significant, but I'd be curious to hear what the rest of the board thinks. Um, and it's also just to say that the originally the addition, the proposed addition was larger than the existing structure. And now it's a 70% increase in the gross area. 
so in some ways, I find that more helpful than just comparing 8,000 to 7,000. Um, and the other thing I wanted to note, I do have some concerns about this, but um, I, I did want to note that I, in addition to the reduction in area, I feel that the alignment with, for the back of the structure with the adjacent properties is significant. Could you elaborate on that? Oh, just the um, if you look at the figure ground diagram, the back of the building is now aligned with the back of the garage at the adjacent property, whereas it used to extend much further back. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I'm curious to hear if the rest of the board feels that significant, but um, to me, it, it brings it a little bit more in line with the, the scale. Thank you. I'm um, just going to see if I could pull that up here. I'm glad you brought that up because I really was very mindful of not going any further back than our neighbor in keeping that open beyond that point. So this alignment here, staying within those sort of the front two thirds of the site and then also uh, from the front, it's, it stands out less. Oh, you don't see it. It's, oh, I didn't, I didn't hit the last button. There we go. There we go. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, so again, then here, this is the, the alignment with the back edge of the garage. Um, whereas this is the back of the house on the adjacent property. And then from Franklin Street, it's much more in keeping with the alignment of the original house as opposed to um, where it used to extend much, much closer to the side lot lines. The edge of the um, the property on Hamlet Street is also, I don't know if it exactly aligns, but it's also very close now. If you were to extend the line all the way up from the garage mm -hmm. past the back of the addition all the way up to Hamlet. This sort of picks up this yeah. So in terms of the size of the yard, it's similar to the adjacent property, but it is bringing the residential use much deeper into the site than on the adjacent parcel. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I just wanted to, I'm, I'm quietly listening mostly to the architects who are real experts in all of this and and trying to learn. But it does seem to me that there are two different issues that are involved here. One has to do with the sheer physical structure. What, how, and that is really what uh, Ms. Hoffman has been talking to. If you kind of looked at the diagram we just looked at without any history in this case and asked yourself, it, does this house seem consistent with the house next door, the ledger house? It seems to me that in terms of massing, in terms of the physical building, not the use of the building, but the physical building itself, it looks pretty similar. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it's located in roughly the same place, follows a similar line. To be sure, there is a difference in use because the garage is, uh, uh, because the, at the very end of the ledger property is the garage, which is presumably not occupied, but uh when you're just looking but if you didn't know anything about what was in the building i don't think you would see that building as radically different from the building next door and that is especially true when you begin looking at the heights because the applicant has come what i think is a fairly substantial way towards bringing the height down so that it didn't provide all of the vertical massing that was true of the earlier 
uh, of the earlier iterations. So I recognize that it is, and the neighbors have emphasized that they didn't seem to care that much about the massing of the actual physical structure, but we're really interested in how far back the residential use extends. Um, and I have to say that I'm much less moved by that than it doesn't, I'm not quite sure I understand why it is that that part of it would adversely affect the neighboring community the way the mass would. And in most of the examples we've talked about, we haven't really been hearing much about how terrible it would be to have people actually living that far back in the property. It's been mostly about the place of the physical structure, whether it will block the sun, where it is with respect to looking into the neighbor's yards and so forth, all of which are really essentially massing things rather than, than use things, possibly with the exception of looking into the yards, which the applicant has come some way to deal with. So I don't know that I think of this as being baby steps. It seems to me that, that what has happened here, I mean, the applicant was sent away basically saying, you know, th this is sort of your last chance to come up with your best and final offer. And I think that they've made a significant move. Uh, it has not persuaded the neighbors. Um, uh, Mr. Moore has been pretty eloquent as a non-neighbor in saying that this is a compromise and reminding us that we've got trying to deal with that historical structure uh in in picture as well it's it's not what maybe what would be good here is not necessarily what would be good anywhere if you didn't have that consideration um but it does seem to me that that uh they may have done their best the applicant may have done their best there may be some other things that they might do but they haven't put those on the table and it's up to us to figure out at this point whether either what we see before us or what we see that could be modified by a condition that could be crafted tonight uh, is approvable. Um, and if not, it seems to me that the applicant should either withdraw or let us go ahead and take a vote. And uh, and depending on what their guess is as to what the vote would be. And, uh, and just, you know, sometimes you just can't get to yes. Thank you, Mr. Hamlin. Um, just a, a, a quick question for the um, Mr. Mr. Mano. Um, so, on the original historic building, the proposed uh, dormers on the roof were those already discussed with the historic board? Yes, they were. Okay, because mm -hmm. it looks like there might be a slight change in them, um, but. Because you say that has already been discussed with the with that board. I have. I've been discussing it with historical um, right along as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll have to go back after this one more time just to finalize things with them. Okay. Other members of the board? Let's Comments? Mr. Chair. Mr. Riccadelli. You know, I, um, I think I think just to echo uh, where Mr. Hanlon left it off uh, for, you know, both the neighbors and the applicant, it feels like we need to sort of finish this tonight because it's, mm -hmm. it's unfair to everyone to sort of leave it hanging. I think I think the applicant has done, you know, a good job addressing our comments. I I certainly understand and respect um all the neighbors um opinions and you know their view of how this project would look. Um you know from from my perspective, uh the height uh of those back massings uh, really does change the appearance of this um, building. Uh, and it's mostly because many of the items that have come up in previous meetings, access to light, privacy, all of those things are are really impacted by the height. Um, if if this were not uh, a historic home and an addition and all these other things, 
uh, just a lot of the size. Someone could by right build this building right all the way back uh, uh, much further than the applicant is proposing. And uh, I'm not saying that that would be a good thing. I'm just saying that uh, I think that uh, we need to consider all of those possibilities here because um, because uh, you know I, I think that they're trying to respond to these comments and uh, you know the, I, I, my opinion is that uh, this has been a significant um, amount of progress from what we saw, especially at the first hearing. Thank you. Other comments from the from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. Holly. Yeah, I, I've been um looking at the comparison elevations and and um I echo with the rest of the members here that it, it is a sub substantial improvement and in line with what was expected from the board from the last hearing you know uh, obviously the comparison is happening from the neighbors relative to the volume versus you know of the size but as as mr riccardelli was saying you know this is by right and you know um and the architect and the and the ap applicant have done i think what was asked for um so and i think i agree with the current um, there obviously there might be more that could be done, but um, without changing the program, and uh, which is not part of the scope of the board, you know, to address that. Thank you for that. I know I've been struggling with this for uh, since it first came through. Uh, I was back on the site last week, uh, uh, taking a look around. Um, you know, and agree specifically with the with the neighbors about the current condition of the house. It's really it's unfortunate seeing the house um, sort of in this paused state uh, with you know sort of wide open to the to the elements and the weather. Um, you know, it'd be nice to see it closed back up and brought back to its uh, its, its former glory. Um, I I'm still sort of torn about the back. Um, I had hoped to see it lower um and sort of less obtrusive i i understand that applicants um you know desire to keep it as a you know either you know four bedroom or three bedroom with an office um you know it's nice to have it that big does it really need to be that big i haven't heard any sort of argument that um you know it's essential to have it of that scale uh, because of, you know, if, if it was two bedrooms, it wouldn't be developable. If it was, you know, two, three bedrooms, it wouldn't be developable. Um, so I'm still sort of torn that it, it, it feels like the, the thing that's driving the size is just the desire to, um, you know, sort of take maximum advantage of the property, uh, that's there. And then, you know, it, it will be turned over to new owners who then have to um, to accept the, the, the consequences of, of that decision um, or take advantage of that decision, whichever whichever way you view it. Um, I'm still not entirely sure. I'm 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 happy with where we are at the moment. Um, but we had, you know. The. The requirements that you need to convince four of us so um we'll sort of see where we where we end up um mr chairman but i think this is a good would be a good opportunity uh sorry mr hanley um i was wondering if it, if it if it all came down to whether the applicant i mean if the difference between success and failure is whether the applicant can satisfy the the uh, concern that the chair just expressed, whether that could be put into, or that whether for a whether they that they could take a deep breath and agree to that, and b whether or not that that could essentially be put into a condition, which would require them to change the plans, but would avoid the necessity of carrying this on 
on and on. In other words, can you get all the way to the end, satisfying the problem that the chair just pointed to um, without having this hemp hearing limp along a little longer? Because I think it's everybody's sense that we've gone far enough. We invited the applicant to do its best to satisfy the what we had asked them to do and 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 they've done a lot as i as, as i think many of us have said um if there's if there was one more step whether it's a baby step or a giant leap that they needed to do in order to address the chair's concern uh is that something they'd be willing to do and that they could do without drawing this out even longer i mean my my concern would just be that if we were you know any change that would really sort of change the envelope of the building is something we I would be very reluctant to try to approve through a condition. Like, I just don't know how we would write it up. You know, in the prior case, it was pretty simple because we were talking about, you know, changing some of the trim, but we weren't changing any of the parameters of the building. Um, in this case, we may be changing some of the parameters of the building. Um, I know this This board does have a long history of, of you know, sort of try, working to come to a consensus. I. You know, it's it's very possible we won't come to a consensus on this one, but I don't think that's necessarily a, um, you know, a detrimental thing. Um, but I'm I'm hoping that if we go through the criteria, um, and sort of address try to address those findings directly, that will help to sort of inform where we where we are here. Um, so the. The way we would typically review this, um, so the large addition, which is section four, excuse me, 542B6 in the zoning bylaw requ requires uh, a special, it's a special permit. Uh, so the special permit criteria apply, but in addition, the board has to make a finding that the alteration or addition is in harmony with other structures and uses in the vicinity. Um, and in making that determination, the board needs to consider the dimensions and the setbacks in relation to abutting structures and uses and to consider conformity with the purposes of the bylaw. Um, and so I know the board is aware of what the purposes of the bylaw are, but just for the uh, general public, um, the purposes are section, section 1.2 in the zoning bylaw. The purpose of this bylaw is to promote health, safety, convenience, morals, and welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Arlington, lessen congestion in the streets, conserve health, secure safety from fire, panic, and other dangers, provide adequate light and air, prevent overcrowding of land, avoid undue concentration of population, encourage housing for persons at all income levels to facilitate the adequate provision of transportation, water, sewerage, school, parks, and other requirements to protect and preserve open space as a natural resource for the conservation of natural conditions of flora and fauna, and to serve as urban amenity for scenic and aesthetic enjoyment and recreational use, conserve the value of land and buildings to encourage the most appropriate use of land throughout the town to achieve optimum environmental quality through review and cooperation by the use of incentives, bonuses, design and review to preserve and increase its amenities, encourage an orderly expansion of the tax base by utilization, development, redevelopment of land. It is made with reasonable consideration to the character of the district and its peculiar suitability for particular uses with a view to giving direction or affect to land development policies and proposals of the redevelopment board, including the making of Arlington a more viable and more pleasing place to live, work, and play. Well, so um, that is the what we are to consider um, when we're talking about conformity. So um, I don't know if it's more helpful to do the the find the large addition finding first or the other required findings. Um, but on my, on my sheet, the other findings come first. So I'll just go ahead and start from the top. Um, so the requested use is allowed or allowed by special permit in the district, um, which this, which this is, it would be, uh, a, it's a two family house in a two family district. It would be a large addition, um, under 542B6, which, uh, would require specific findings by the board. Um, why the requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Um, so 
so the request so this is the requested use so the this the use of the property for a two family does increase the um the ability of people to um, enjoy the benefits of living in Arlington it does allow for the um the early expansion of the tax base um and to uh uh to sort of create um uh, additional living units for uh, for residents. Uh, the requested use will not create an undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. Um, the addition is towards the rear of the property. It is a two family district, which uh, would foresee the the vehicles for two families, and so that will not create any undue congestion or pedestrians impair pedestrian safety. Uh, requested use will not overload any public system. Um, again, this is two family and a two family. Um, and the, the it will not substantially change uh, the the use of any public system. Uh, how special regulations for the requested use are fulfilled? Uh, so that specifically would be the the section on large addition, which we'll come back to. Um, that we that would need to be uh, we would need to make a positive finding on the large addition in order for that to be fulfilled. Um, then why the requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the neighborhood. Um, I think this sort of gets very much to the, the, the heart of the matter. Um, in the special permit lines, it specifically is how the use will not impair the character or integrity. Um, and again, this is a two family and a two family, so the use itself is not um really an issue it it really is the, the issue of the uh the massing of the building which is taken up under 542b6 um uh, uh the requested use will not be detrimental to the public health or welfare um again the use is an anticipated use in the district as a two family uh and why the requested use will not cause excess of use detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, having additional two families in a two family neighborhood is not detrimental um, to the use. So those are the findings that are required under 333 um, in the bylaw, uh, which I think the board can uh, find favorably uh, with the exception of 333E, which we now need to evaluate under the, the question of the large addition. Um, and so the large addition, rather than looking at the use, looks at the actual uh, alteration or addition. It looks at the structure and not necessarily the use. So the board would need to find that the alteration or addition is in harmony with other structures and uses in the vicinity and specifically considering the dimensions and setbacks in relation to abutting structures and uses um, and conformity with the purposes of the bylaw. Um, so I don't want to overly, you know, put forward my opinion on this necessarily. Um, I think we all need to sort of determine for ourselves how we feel about this. Um, I do still have concerns that this is not entirely, um, in harmony with other structures and uses in the vicinity, particularly because of the, I, I, I do still feel that the, the scale of it is quite large um, and it extends into uh, into the yard in such a large fashion, even though from the front, it will be mostly concealed by the building itself. Um, it is just a very large um, addition and I'm just very, I'm just, I still have reservations about the the, the scale of it. And, and it's being in harmony. Mr. Chair. Ms. Hoffman. Um, I, I understand those reservations, but what I don't understand is, because we've, we've talked about this a lot of times in a lot of hearings, how, how much of a reduction would be needed to bring it into harmony? Is, is that something you have a sense of? Um, so for 
for me, sort of the way I'm looking at this is, is sort of looking at other precedents uh, in the neighborhood. Um, and as I think it's sort of come up, the, the adjacent property is sort of the only one that really sort of has that same, um, the same sort of development pattern where uh, the existing house that's at the front has been extended more towards the rear. Um, and in that case, it was done at a much lower scale. So it, it, it sort of maintains more of the, that open character to the rear yard. Um, whereas in this case, it still feels like it's, you know, pretty tall extrusion into the, into the rear yard. Um, but like, if you were to take the, you know, the same exact lot dimension and slide it in the opposite direction and you look, you know, along the abutting, the, the side abutting street, you know, it, if you were to think of that as a single parcel, then, you know, it's, it's fully developed front to back, but it's, you know, it, you're looking at it from the side instead of the front. So sort of that dense, it's, it's the, to me, I'm not so worried about the footprint as I am about the, the extension of the full height and that it is, um, it just, it just, it really still feels to me like, um, you know, it's just a, it's a, it's a large second building attached to what is in reality a very large front building. Um, you know, most two families in town are, you know, nowhere near that large. Um, and it's just, I, I keep the, the, one of the things I, I keep staring at it, and I can't figure out where all the square footage is going because it just doesn't, like it's a lot of square footage for what appear to be two, you know, just two four unit buildings, but it's a lot of floor area. But that doesn't necessarily mean I'm right. I don't disagree with you, but it still leaves me wondering how much smaller would be good enough. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the two families, the the old style two families in Arlington, you know, it's a uh, they were this is actually a duplex because it's, they're side by side. Um, the old two families, the first floor was a two bedroom, and the upper the upper unit was a four bedroom. Um, and so, you know, I think if the, if we were looking at an application where the front unit was, you know, the historic building, the four bedrooms, the full size it is, and the rear portion was a, you know, a two, a two bedroom unit um, that was, you know, at a single story or was sort of, you know, brought even closer to the, to the front lot line of the, um, that something like that of that scale would have a different feel to me. Um, but this really just feels like it's, um, you know, as a duplex, it's a little odd to have the duplex front back, um, but to have it really be as large as it is, as far back as it is to me is just, it's a little disconcerting. Um, but that, you know, that's just me. Well, I find that helpful. Thank you. <laughs> We'd definitely be interested in hearing from other members of the board how they feel about the about how they about the, the, the this question of the of the harmony with other structures in the in the vicinity. Mr. Chuck. There's a little blank. Um, I feel like the proposal we have in front of us is much more harmonious now than it was when we originally started in, in January. Um, that's for sure. Um, I still struggle a little bit kind of to what you're describing. Um, 
in terms of the overall kind of mass um, of it and just kind of looking at the elevations we have in front of us. I think part of where I struggle with it is the the back portion um, where there's that story and a half uh, area. It just reads a little awkward in the back with such a big tall roof. Uh, tall probably isn't quite the right word on it, but it just feels like a lot of uh, roof there. And then that mass um, directly to the left of it, where the main, where the entry is to that back unit, it it reads as like two massive dormers when you look at the rear elevation. So when we talk about massing and fitting in with the surrounding neighborhood, that's also where I struggle with this proposal. And, um, you know, I also think what I was potentially describing and some other members of the board were describing for what we wanted to see it, it, it I think we I was at least thinking something more more drastic than what we we have in front of us, but I I also see that they've done a pretty good drastic step from where we were. Um so I it's one of those things of I'm still kind of stuck and I think we're better where now than where we were before. Um mm -hmm. but I'm 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 still not all the way there. And, um, you know, obviously, as we've been saying, we, we do need to come to some decision tonight. Um, can't yes. have to keep going back. And, and I also don't think, um, to kind of your point earlier, that there's any condition that we could write that would satisfy that as well. Because I think, you know, just a couple of things I mentioned are, are pretty significant changes to the, to the building itself. Mr. Chairman. Thank you for that. Mr. Hanlon. I just have a question. The Is the nature of the protection of the historic building such that someone could buy it, uh, wait a year, demolish it, and then just build whatever the zoning bylaw would allow to be done by right on this lot? Or is there an additional protection that would prevent that from happening? My understanding is that is the current town bylaw, that there is a one year demolition delay from the filing of the application, the, the filing of the application for demolition um, until the structure can be raised in the So we we need at least to keep in mind that that this is not necessarily going to come to us and if it's turned down today it is not necessarily going to come to us as a better special improvement application uh, but as something else entirely that's a possibility that is true uh, mr chair may, may i add to that yes please i i think i think you know in that same vein that Mr. Hanlon just mentioned, uh, I, th I think it's likely that it would not come to us at all if if that was the route that this project would go down, because um, the owner could uh, easily build a house of this size by right on this property because it is so long. So uh, uh, this uh, the ability to do this review and ask for these changes is precisely because of the historic nature and the fact that this is an existing building with an addition. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Holly. Uh, I have a question for um, the architect and the applicant. I mean, we, we've yes. seen the best and final. Has there been other iterations that they have thought about, maybe not in a presentable format, um, at this stage, but uh, you know, has there been any other reduction on board that they could share? Um, my architect and I have, have discussed this in vain, and we thought just where we were was what everyone was aligning the back. We really just tried to match next door, go back further. 
And um, mm -hmm. you tell them. Tell me a little bit more about you. Like our first date, right? So like we just said. What? I'm sorry. Someone no. was. No, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. They've, they've been muted. Okay. Um, I don't know if Jim, you want to add to that? Um, again, I, we were trying to be very mindful of the neighbors and just keep it, keeping it in line. Um, it is the largest lot. Um, so it's, I understand like Hamlet Street, that they're, they're small lots, but they take up more space on their lot. I mean, we still, with this iteration, have such a large backyard and so much open space. Um, I just thought ending it where the neighbor's house ended, even if that's the garage, um, I just felt that kept in line and that's what everyone was looking for. Yeah, if, if we, I mean, what my approach was, was to work with the massing and then try to, as I described, the, the, the two suite solution was really meant to be a compromise for, a, you know, to, I don't want to say a, a smaller unit, but a unit with less features than um, that than were desirable. So, mm -hmm. um, so you you know you end up working it both ways, right? You you bring it down and you see what you can get in there. You rationalize the the massing in terms of dimensions and height, and then see what you can get with the volume. And so I I don't have I mean it's not a linear progression, sure. um, but um, yeah. So it, that, that, that's how we ended up with this one. Okay. And if I may add also, our house is more narrow than our neighbor's house due to the fact that it's historic and keeping that historic um, lineage going. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think that's a valuable discussion on this as well. Um, all right. So, so um, for the the question of the large edition. Um, The question of whether it's in harmony, um, so I very, very much agree with Mr. LeBlanc and and others that this is, you know, far better than what we had before. Um, and I, I definitely struggle with is it good enough, but I also take Mr. Hanlon's point that, um. You know, should the board not approve this, um, that does not put an end to things. Um, that there are other options for the applicant. Um, the period for historic demolition, um, and then just redeveloping the site. Um, in a in a matter that would be in keeping with the zoning bylaw, and because they are pursuing this route and they are keeping the historic house, um, it puts them at a, at a slight disadvantage that they do have to come before the board for approval um, of this project. Um, okay. Um, so going back to the definition of the large additions, so um, the finding the board would have to make is that the alteration is in harmony with other structures um, 
and uses. Um, I don't know what the best way to address that is. Um, I think that the, I think we agree that the, that the dimensions and the setbacks, well, certainly the setbacks in relation to the abutting structures, the house, the, the, from the floor plan perspective, were where we would like to see the, um, the outline of the house. Um, the vertical dimensions, I think they're, still higher than um than we maybe had wanted to see but they may be at the heights that they need to be in order for um for the for the applicant to um move forward with a project and move forward specifically with this project as opposed to um something that might be a larger use of the land um And in terms of the, you know, the basic purposes of the bylaw, um, you know, this certainly would promote the health, safety, convenience, morals, welfare of the inhabitants um, of the property. Would I don't think would that be at the detriment of the abutting neighbors? Um, I'm not convinced that it is to the extent that it would um, be something that would cause the board to not to, um, to to have to vote in the negative on the project. Um, it would still provide adequate light and air. Um, the land is a lot much less is I don't think the grounds would be overcrowded. Um, they would be crowded, but not necessarily overcrowded. Um, the question of an undue concentration of population, it would be, um, you know, it's a large two family, but it's not completely out of the realm of possibility. Um, encourage housing for persons at all income level, not necessarily. Um, but they are both the same size. Uh, facilitate adequate provision, transportation, water, sewage, schools, parks, all that. Um, I think it could be covered. Conservation of natural conditions of flora and fauna. Um, I think it does to, to some extent uh, consider the value of the land of the buildings, encourage most appropriate use of land. Um, this is residential land. It should be used for uh, for residential, it is nice to have the large open backyard, um, especially one that can be, you know, enjoyed by other neighbors. Um, but to what extent that can be imposed on the owner of that land um, is a, you know, is a real question. Um, uh, this would encourage an expansion of the, you know, orderly expansion of the tax base. By, by development and redevelopment of the land um, is made with reasonable consideration to the character of the district and its peculiar suitability for particular uses with a view to giving direction and effective land development policies. Um, so I think there's enough there that the board, you know, could find that it's, um, you know, considering the conformity with the purposes of the bylaw and considering the dimensions and setbacks in relation to abutting structures, I think the board could find that the alteration is in harmony with other structures and uses in the vicinity, but I think that would be um, something that each member would need to consider for themselves as to whether or not they agree with that logic. Um, oh, that's... And then um, were the board to vote in the affirmative on the special permit, um, there would be conditions. Um, we would have the standard three conditions that uh, were previously read into the record. So we won't read those again. 
Um, we had talked briefly about instituting a condition um, in regards to the, the massing of the property, like the only possible, I'm sort of struggling, is, is there a way to do that? Um, the only thing I can think of is you could, we could require that the, the single story addition at the rear of the property be removed. Um, that would be a clear, um, a clear dictate. It would be easy to understand it would be hard to misinterpret what we were looking for. Um, other than that, I'm not quite sure what we could say that would um, be something that would provide adequate direction to the applicant in order for them to um, to move forward. But I think in a lot of ways, that's something that we like is that it does finally come down to that single story scale that we were looking for. I don't think there are any other um, conditions that of of the usual conditions that we would want to apply. Are there any uh, any conditions apart from the standard three that anyone would want to include? Um, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. LeBlanc. Um, is it within our purview that we could have a condition that? Um, limits the potential future um, additions within the foot uh, foundation walls of this structure, because then now that we're having this new foundation structure, later mm -hmm. on, someone could, um, you know, add additional dormers or build higher or something um, within the found, you know, within the foundations as, as a bright, um, is that something that we're able to to include. Ask Mr. Hanlon on that. I think the condition that we have that the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to the special permit grant would encumber anyone who is looking to do further additions to come back before the board. Do you agree with that, Mr. Hanlon? Yes. Okay. Okay. I mean, anything that would require an amendment of this of this permit would require that. Okay. So then, with that, um, Chairman, can I ask one more question? Please, of course. Uh, you had mentioned one of the. I mean, one possible condition is to um is to not is to say that the that the uh, the single story building towards the end need, should be removed is it possible to achieve where you want to go by having a numerical height limitation in feet It can't be more than so much high. I recognize that the applicant is not even going close to what would be allowed right. under the zoning bylaw. The issue here is really a question not, I mean, but of course, if it were just that, he'd be building by right anyway. That she would, the, the issue here is whether uh, going a little bit less far from where you could otherwise go um, might might make a difference and yet be clear enough that it wouldn't require so many other kinds of changes that we would find it. It's like squeezing a balloon that when you do it on one side then a problem emerges on the other. Yeah, I, my sense is that if the board was to impose a, a height limitation, um, there are a lot of different ways to get to that point. Right. Um, and we would lose the control over how that happens. Yep. We would lose the ability to review that on the public's behalf. Okay. Well, just, just try. <laughs> yeah. <more>. Nope. I... <laughs> 
Mr. Chair, you yeah. had, you had described a potential condition that you would be comfortable with, right? Of the mm -hmm. removal of the one story at the back. Yeah. So is is that would that be valuable to the applicant? Mr. Mono? Um, I'd have to I'd have to discuss it with my architect. I, I don't know if I could make that decision right right now. Um Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I mean we we sort of already made it clear that we don't want to go to, over to another hearing, but but we could do what they do in town meeting is and lay this on the table. We have a lot of people who are waiting in the wings to get their mm -hmm. chance before us, and if the applicant can have a useful conversation with her architect in the course of the next forty five minutes and come back with a with an approach to that, we could do that. But at this point, I'm beginning to feel that that our struggling with this case is beginning to adversely affect others. And if the applicant, you know, can, can do it tonight, maybe they should, we should give them a chance. And yeah. I, I don't want to have to continue a hearing and have a whole other hearing in this again. Certainly. Um, Mr. Meyer, would you, Mr. Rice, Ms. Ling, would you be amenable to doing that? Sure. Yes. yes. So we would table this matter now yeah. and then we would return to it. Um, we will touch base with you after the next hearing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All right. You. So, thank you. So, with that, then I would um, may I have a motion to table uh, the hearing on uh, 165 Franklin Street until later this evening. Uh, should Should that be just after the next hearing? Well, we don't know how fast the next hearing will go. Yeah, I can't give a time specific. But. All right. So we will table. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, I move that the uh, board table further consideration of this application until a point later in this meeting. Great, thank you. And a second? Second. Uh, well, if that was Mr. Holly, Mr. LeBlanc, but I'll give it to Ida Holly. Um, so then a vote. Sorry, it has to be a roll call vote of the board. So with that, Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Um, Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. Chair votes aye. So we are tabled on uh, 165 Franklin Street. Thank you for that. Uh, that brings us then to um, uh, item six on our agenda this evening, uh, DACA 379 uh, 57 Beacon Street. Um, so if the applicant uh, could go ahead and introduce herself and tell us what she'd like to do. Hi, my name is Karen Kettler. I'm the owner of 57 Beacon Street. Um, it's just around the corner from the property you've been discussing, about five or six blocks. It's more like those houses on Hamlet Street in that it's much smaller on a small lot. Um, I think I have a, uh, the ability to share, if I may, I'm going to share uh, some of the materials that were part of the package. Um, to And I will be as quick as I possibly can. Take your time. Um, Hopefully, here we go. Can you see that? Uh, it, yes, we can. Great. So um, this is the plot plan that shows in black the existing property, which is a 1,485 square foot single family home. It's a three bedroom home with a very small footprint. Um, it's currently a 760 square foot footprint. As you can see, there is a substantial amount of the lot is um, landscaped open space, but um, there is a proposed addition that you can see with the red lines across the back to extend both the side and rear lines of uh, walls of the house to create a small addition. That addition would be 11.8 feet by 14.6 feet for a total of 172 square feet bringing the total square footage of the house to 1,657 or 58, something very close to that, which is about half the size of either of the two units you were just talking about. Um, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't resist. I had a long time to think about it. <laughs> uh, as you see from the um, surveyor's calculations, um, we're not changing the front yard. 
the side yard is conforming, the rear yard was non-conforming, um, but there's no change to it. Um, there is a reduction of landscaped open space, um, but it is still well above the required 10%. And there is a continuance of a non-conformance on usable open space in that there's a requirement for 30% usable open space. The lot is quite small at 3,750 square feet. So it is not really possible to meet the definition of usable open space, which I believe requires 25 feet in all directions. Um, and so there is currently no quote unquote usable open space. And after the uh, proposed addition, there would still be no usable open space, but it's my understanding that the extension of that non-conformance is what requires um, a request for a special permit, which is what I come before you to request. Um, as you see, there is also a modest increase in the, in the lot coverage. The maximum is 35% and we're still beneath it, but there's a, a modest um, increase in lot coverage. We can come back to this if you have questions, but I wanted to show you some uh, pictures um, so you get a sense for what we're doing here. This is the rear of the house. The uh, addition would sort of fill in that corner is a, a little used corner of the lot that mostly is about access to that bulkhead that entrance to the cellar would be enclosed within the home uh, following the addition. You can see the view from the street on the right. Uh, the addition would hardly be visible from the street. Um, there are really only two neighbors who would be affected. And these pictures kind of show them. Um, the picture in the middle is uh, shows 61 Beacon Street, which is the adjacent property. Um, and you can see that they would be able to see the addition from where they are. I don't know, these aren't th uh, that helpful maybe, but you can see the distance between their homes. And then 59 Beacon Street is behind my house. In fact, the driveway runs on my property, but it is uh, they have an easement to access their house. So um, this is you know immediately in front of their house. It's a one-story addition. Um, and these are the plans. Um, I, there's a representative of my contractor, custom contracting, Michael Daniel is here with me. So if you have questions about the plans, I'll probably phone a friend, um, <laughs> but this gives you a sense. I'm gonna make this a little bigger if I can. Um, on the right is the current floor plan. Um, this uh, addition in the back was done in 2000, I think it was a porch, an existing porch that was um, added, uh, you know, enclosed. As you can see, there's sort of a, a powder room that juts out into that room. We currently are using that as a dining room. It's a little awkward. The, this is the kitchen, which you can't see it, but there's a peninsula here. It's kind of a galley style kitchen with a small eating kitchen. With the renovation, the kitchen will sort of make use of the full space of the kitchen and be more like a modern kitchen with an island in the middle. Um, this would remain the dining room, but would no longer have a bathroom in the middle of it. And we would uh, get a little pantry, move the bath over there and, and add a uh, laundry within the living space because it's currently in the basement. Um, so that's what's proposed. Um, there are elevations as well, which, sorry if I just made them. There we go. Um, so you can get a sense for the roof line, which will complement, but not exactly follow the existing roof line of the, the porch, the enclosed porch there. Um, there will not be any increase in occupancy. So there shouldn't be any Im um, impact on any municipal systems. Um, this is in R2 which is already quite densely developed. You've been hearing about the neighborhood. Uh, I live on Beacon Street where to be honest, most small houses like mine have been torn down and been replaced with two family condos. Um, there's been an enormous amount of that on this street. So even after this addition, this would be one of the smaller homes in the neighborhood. Um, I think that's basically what I have to present and I would be happy to take your questions or ask uh, Mr. Daniel to answer any questions I can't. Right. Well, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I just had two questions. Um, so one is the so the right of way that goes back to number fifty nine. Yes. Um, the addition. I know you're 
coming slightly closer to that side lot line. But I just want to confirm that you're not anywhere near the the extent of that easement. Or it's no. not really an There's actually a fence that runs essentially along the what a little outside of where the um uh the addition would extend to and so mm -hmm. That that's it works with the fence there, so we'll be well within the fence. Okay, and then the 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 other question I think would be for the contractor is really not necessarily relevant for us, but just want to make sure that uh, this work can be done um, in a way that doesn't encumber the right of way. Mr. Daniel, I'm going to let you take that one. Is he still here? I'm, I'll, I guess I'll take it. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, I, I couldn't are. find my unmute button there. Sorry. Yes, we would certainly do everything we can from around the other side. We would not interrupt um, in any way with the right of way for the people behind to get there. Great. Those are my questions. Um, are there any other questions from the board? Not seeing questions from the board. Mr. Riccadelli, did you have a question? Uh, maybe just a, a quick question. Um, uh, are you planning to extend the basement with this addition as well, or is it just a slab on grade for this addition? It would just be um, pilings. It would be, okay. yeah, would not extend the basement. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Keller, if I could ask you to go ahead and stop the share, um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll open this hearing for public comment. Again, public comment is taken as it relates to the matter at hand. It should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. Um, you can uh, press the raise hand button on the reactions tab, or if you're calling in, you can dial star nine. Um, to be recognized by the chair and given time for your questions and comments. Are there any members of the public who wish to address this application? And once, going twice. Go ahead and close public comment for um, this particular application. Uh, so what the board has before us, um, this is a uh, it's a single family uh, excuse me a single story addition uh, to the rear of an existing property. Um, it will slightly uh, move uh, decrease the the left side setback, but that is still beyond the required setback. Um, it is already within the rear setback, so that is an existing nonconformity, um, and the property is also nonconforming in relation to usable open space. Uh, so this would fall then um, under the question of a uh, increasing the um, intensity of an existing nonconformity. And um, for that, uh, this would be uh, so increasing the nonconforming nature of a structure uh, that's a single family or two family dwelling. And the board would need to make a finding that it will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing condition. Um, and in doing so, the board typically reviews uh, the special permit findings under uh, section 333. Before I move on to findings, are there any other um, questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. LeBlanc. Uh, I just had one. Um, did you, have you reviewed the plans for the addition with the rear of butter? That's uh... yes. Um, both the abutters who are affected are supportive, and I'd offered to write support letters. The zoning administrator said you don't need to have them do that. We're going to send them notices, so I didn't have them do that. But they they are supportive. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, so with that, um, 
going down the required findings. Uh, so the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Um, so we're not changing the use, but the uh, we are not because we're not really changing the the outline of the building. We're just infilling corner. Um, the benefit the benefits to the uh, to the homeowner would certainly uh, outweigh any uh, any adverse effects by occupying that piece of land. Uh, requested use is allowed or allowed by special permit. Um, this can be allowed under uh, uh, in section eight under non-conforming uses and structures. Um, and um, the requested use is essential or desirable to public convenience or welfare. Um, so this is an, an orderly expansion of an existing property. Um, and it is within the within a, a, a small scale. It is done um, in keeping with uh, the uh, the residential design guidelines in terms of um, that this is an addition, a small addition is done at the rear of the property to not impact uh, the front or to change the way that the property is used. Um, the requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. Um, it does not, uh, it is at the rear of the property, so it really doesn't address that, but we also talked about the existing right of way through the property and determined that it will that will not be impacted uh, by during construction. Uh, requested use will not overload any public system. Um, again, this is a very modest change. It would not uh, cause any um, large change in the use of any public system. Uh, special regulations of requested use are fulfilled. So the, that would be that the board will need to make a finding, which we'll come back to, uh, that the increase in the non-conforming nature of the structure would not be substantially more detrimental. Um, then the uh, requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. Uh, this is an extremely modest change, um, and it does not uh, make the building go any closer to uh, the lot line, except for the incidental uh, change in keeping with the side, with the uh, uh, towards the left lot line, in keeping with the the addition being in keeping with the sidewall of the house. Um, the requested use will not be detrimental to public health or welfare. Um, it is just a, it is not uh, a change in use that would cause any issues uh, to public health or welfare and will not cause an excess of use detrimental to the neighborhood where it is just a single family, uh, single family and a two family district. Um, and certainly the extension of the existing single family use will not be detrimental. And then as I said before, the, the question about the, so non-conforming uh, single family or two family dwelling, an increase in the non-conforming nature of the structure uh, will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing condition. And um, I think given the the very small nature of the addition, the modest size of it, the fact that it's only a single story and that it's uh, keeping the existing uh, rear line of the house and the existing left side line of the house, that the board can find that the increase in the non-conforming nature of the structure is not substantially more detrimental um, than the existing condition on the site. Um, and with that, uh, should the board vote to approve this application, we would have the three standard conditions that were read into the record earlier this evening. Um, would there be any additional conditions that members of the board would uh, feel would should be um, added to the list of the standard three? Hearing none. Um, the chair will accept uh, a motion on uh, this application. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hamlin. I move that the application be approved subject to the conditions that the chair read into the record in a previous case. Thank you, Mr. Did Hamlin, the second. Standard conditions. Oh, thank you. Second. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cadelli. So what this is is a vote of the board to approve the special permit for 57 Beacon Street with the three standard conditions as moved by Mr. Hanlon and seconded by Mr. Riccardelli. So we do a roll call vote of the board. Um, Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. Uh, Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. 
And the chair votes aye. The special permit for 57 Beacon Street is approved. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate your patience. Thank you very much. I appreciate everything you do, and I have a new appreciation for it tonight. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank uh, you as well. Um, I will look, uh, just quickly ask Ms. Germano if she and Mr. Riesling have had an opportunity to come to an agreement or if we should continue. Hi, yes. Um, my architect and I have been speaking, and once again, I'll hand it over to Jim. Okay, before you do that, we are going to, we have to just formally vote to take it off the table. Uh, so the chair will take a motion uh, to take uh, docket number 3781, 165 Franklin Street off the table. Mr. Chairman, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. And a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Holly. Uh, roll call vote of the board. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Bill Blank? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Cadelli? Aye. Your vote's aye. This is off the table. Um, so then I would turn to Mr. Risley. All right. Um, um, thank you. Um, we we are willing to remove the rear um, living area, which means we would eliminate the first floor bedroom suite. Um, however, if we're taking that roof off, which engages the other oh, one and a half or one and two thirds story, um, we would like to add two doghouse dormers, one in each of those small bedrooms. And the yard is going to be enormous and it will most likely be the feature for somebody interested in the house. So we would like to put an eight foot deep farmer's porch um, along the um, the remaining mass to um, provide access and um, you know basically set up um, someone's possible sequence to the yard. Okay, so if we go to the uh, to sh oh. here we go. Uh, so if we look at sheet A1.1, here, let me go ahead and share this. So, whoops. Uh, so we would be looking to do here. Um, So we would be basically removing this. That's correct. And then in its place, um, you said you had wanted, so instead of the deck, so the deck would go away as well. Yes. Um, what is this? This is just steps down for the deck, right? This isn't a bulkhead back that, here. That's a bulkhead. Oh, it we is a bulkhead. To, we have to figure that out because that. That would be required by building code. Correct. Okay. Um, and then you would be looking to construct essentially a farmer's porch that would be where whereas this is 16 feet, it would be essentially be half that right. Depth. Um, and this would be so as a farmer's porch, it would be roofed, it would be open, um, but not enclosed. R correct. Okay. Um, and then on the elevation, so essentially the, there would, there would be some form of roof in this general vicinity. That's, that's correct. Apologize oh, that my sketching skills in PDF, uh, and then you had also mentioned, um, that you would had you had asked about dormers. Where were you considering uh, those? If you go to the next um, 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 um elevation sheet, sorry, my word retrieval is starting to fail. Um, <laughs> this uh, so on this elevation though, oh, go. I'm sorry, slide back to the right. 
Yes. So on this elevation, yep. there would there would be a a, a doghouse dormer, just as the others are shown. Um, yeah. On for each bedroom. Okay, so effectively one roughly yeah. here. One oops. Right, because I think we we have to, here. you know, now that we've dropped a suite, we have you know we feel we have to make the bedrooms a little <clears throat> a little bit more than very secondary with a slope ceiling. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so those would be in, sort of in keeping with the size of the other. Exactly, it'd, it'd be the width of a window, right? Okay, so it'd be essentially this exact same thing, but it would that just... that that would be my intent. Yes, okay. and and Mr. Chair, you were correct that that dormer is shown erroneously on the um, existing house. Oh, it is okay. It would be the same as it. It's just for stair access. Oh, so okay. It would, it would be in that location. Okay. Okay, yeah. So let me take us take an attempt here at doing this in writing. Um the rear single story portion of the addition is to be removed a farmer's porch not to exceed eight feet in depth is to be allowed on the rear side of the remaining portion of the addition no more than two one house style dormers to be added to the rear facing roof Okay. All right, so you would say so the, the <clears throat> excuse me, the rear single story portion of the addition is to be removed. A farmer's porch, not to exceed eight feet in depth, is to be allowed on the rear side of the remaining portion of the addition. No more than uh, not more, let's say up to uh, no no more than two doghouse style dormers um identical to those on the side elevation may be added to the rear facing roof um is that what you had proposed yes okay Um, so I, I think the, that this is sufficiently clear as to what the board's intent is, um, because obviously the board can't require them to come back, uh, can't require approval by the board after we close our decision. Um, are there any members of the board who are not comfortable with, um, this condition? 
Mr. I Chairman. Think it, Mr. Hanlon? Um, I'm pretty comfortable. I just wanted to, we, we often, where there's a possibility of, where it's difficult to describe exactly what the proposal is in language that is, you know, airtight, uh, we often put a reference to, you know, as discussed at the hearing or something like that, that just to provide a little bit of ability to look outside the the bare language of the condition to ascertain what the intent is. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's necessary here because I think that, that we're pretty clear. But on the other hand, it, we always think it's clear in advance. It's only when the questions come up later that all of a sudden we realize we're not. So if we had a reference to the hearing itself as a way of dealing with the potential questions that may come up later on, that might be advisable. All to be as discussed at the May 14, 2004 hearing. No okay. So with that condition, um, because it returns to the question as to whether it's in harmony with other structures of vicinity. Um, just quickly like to go back. Whoops, wrong tool. Get this tool to go away. Um, where's that big ground? Here's the big ground. So now the addition would end at this point. I apologize for my inept drawing skills in PDF. Um, and, yeah. and then there would, as we had discussed, there would be a porch along the back side here. Uh, which would be half up uh, no no greater than half the distance um of this which is 16 feet so no greater than eight feet then with are there any further questions from the board on 165 Franklin Seeing none, the chair will take a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I move that the, well, let me just sort of, I would like to say something first. It sure. does seem to me that on the basis of the discussion we already had, uh, and recognizing both the historic importance of the building that's already there and the various other possibilities that might happen uh, down the road if if this is not granted, it seems to me that the issue of, harm of harmony is not a question of whether everything is the same, but a question of whether everything is compatible. Uh, and especially given all of the room that exists on this lot and the way in which the building has come to resemble more the building next door, uh, it seems to me that the last issue was the vertical massing or the height uh, that was a sticking point, both among some of the members of the board and certainly among the uh, many of the people, the neighbors who uh, spoke. Uh, and it seems to me that this last step has been the, if, if we weren't willing to say it was, we'd had drastic steps up to now, this seems to me to be the last drastic step. Uh, and for that reason, I was sort of being on the fence of inclined more to the position of approving the application. And with for those reasons, I would propose that the board approve the application subject to the standard conditions and the condition that uh, the chair just read into the record to which the applicant has agreed. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Riccardelli. Um, 
with that, um, so this will be a roll call vote of the board to approve the special permit application for 165 Franklin Street with the three plus one conditions of four total conditions um, as moved by Mr. Hanlon and seconded by Mr. Riccardelli. Uh, with that, then a roll call vote of the board, Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. Um, Ms. Hoffman. Aye. And the chair will vote aye. Uh, so we will, that is approved uh, for 165 Franklin with um, with the additional conditions. Um, uh, to all the, uh, to the applicant, I appreciate uh, your willingness to be flexible and to, to work with the board on trying to come up with a, um, a, a project that the board is able to approve. Um, I would especially like to thank the the abutters for all their participation um in this hearing i know it's been long for a lot of you um and i know that uh many of you uh probably did not end up with the, the project next door that you were hoping for but i hope that um that we have done um, a suitable job in terms of coming up with a project that you guys can uh that you as abutters can um can live next to uh in going into the future. So we thank you all for your participation in this in this long hearing. Thank you. Um, thank you very with, much, everyone, for your time. Very welcome. So then this brings us to item seven on our docket number 37953 P Road. Um <clears throat> so, so if I could ask the applicants to introduce themselves and tell us what they are looking to do. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for your patience. My name is Ian Jessen. I'm here with my wife, Eliza Hatch. Um, we are the owners at 36 Peabody Road. Um, I'm going to do everything I can to try to keep our narrative brief. I know that it's been a long night for many people and we have several of our neighbors still on the call. So I wanna be respectful of their time and, and let them make any comments that, that they wish to make. Um, but uh, briefly, um, if I can share um, the, the screen. Um, uh, if you could go ahead and do that for them. You should be all set. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, and it might, there might be some challenges here on our side, but I think I just got it. Um, so, uh, as we pull up the plans, um, the um, <clears throat> project that we're discussing is an addition um, uh, of over 750 square feet. I think we work out to about 816 uh, square foot. Um, and the addition would include, um, most importantly for us, we have a growing family uh, with uh, two young children um, and uh, not, a, not a small house, but a snug house uh, and only one bathroom upstairs. So most importantly for us is the addition of a primary bathroom uh, for the um, for the primary bedroom um, and also um, a, a guest bedroom. Uh, currently, we have uh, three bedrooms in the house, uh, which are all occupied um, by us and our, and our two children. Um, so we would be looking to add also a, a guest room um, uh, that itself would have access to a, a full bathroom, um, which I call a mother-in-law suite. Um, to allow uh, for our um, our kids' grandparents to 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 spend some more time in the house. Um, below those two rooms uh, on the first floor uh, would be a, a small um, library or study, um, and then uh, another uh, room that would be uh, available as a bedroom. Um, but what we would plan to use primarily is a home office, um, which itself would have a, a half bath in it. Um, the uh, if you can see our screen right now, uh, the addition that I'm speaking of is uh, this setback area um, that's on the right side of uh, the rendering. Um, the existing house is everything uh, that is to the left side. Um, the house is like umbrella style. Uh, we tried to work with our designer. Uh, Black Dog is the design build firm that we're working with um, to match the existing Gambrell style um, while uh, maintaining um, uh, sort of a a consistency of facade um, so that it, it uh, blends in seamlessly. And this matches uh, almost all of the other homes on the street in the area, which uh, was 
uh, developed, I think, in the early 20th century by, by a single developer. So many uh, homes of this same style um, exist around it. And I think that this would blend in nicely. Uh, if we switch uh, quickly to a plot plan, um, you can see uh, in this area here is our existing house with uh, a previous one-story addition that uh, was done. Um, I don't actually know what year this was done, but, but long before we, we owned the home. Um, the proposed uh, addition is here in the red hatched area uh, on the side yard. Uh, we maintain um, a, a, a nice separation from uh, the side boundary. Um, the only uh, area that I, I believe may be some element of an existing nonconformance, it's a little bit difficult to tell because we're sort of a, a notched property at the end of this road, is this 17 foot uh, or just over 17 and a half foot um, distance from our existing corner uh, to the corner of Peabody Road. Uh, and that would remain the, the closest um, uh, the, the, the closest that the structure would get to any property boundary. Uh, we're setting back the addition uh, from the end of Peabody Road uh, greater than that existing 17 and a half feet. Um, our property butts up against Spy Pond, um, so we are fortunate to have a, a very large um, backyard that is on an extremely steep sloping hill. Um, so that that helps us when it comes to uh, open space, um, almost all of which is landscaped. Um, you can see these um, retaining walls that form a sort of a circuitous path that, that brings us uh, down to the pond. Um, uh, we have... Uh, uh, put this plan in front of Conservation Commission um, because you can see here, there's a tiny little clip of the corner of the addition that um, does enter into the 100 foot uh, boundary uh, area around Spy Pond uh, and Conservation Commission approved um, an RDA for this uh, project on uh, April 8th. Um, and uh, I think the only thing that I missed there was, oh, no, I, I think I actually did mention the the, the open space. Um, certainly because of the large property, we're, we're not going to um, to run up against any of those limits. Uh, so that's the best that I can do in a very short period of time. Uh, I'd, I'd love to pause there and, and give our neighbors an opportunity if, if they wish to speak, if, if, the, if the board uh, has any other questions for us, uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to address them. Absolutely. We will certainly come to, uh, when we come out to public uh, comment, we will absolutely look forward to hearing from your neighbors. Um, <laughs> so a couple quick questions. Um, the the plot plan shows an area that of open space on the um, on the back side of the house. Um, is that portion of the lot fairly level? It's a, it appears to be above the first. Yeah. So the so the area of open space that that the surveyor put on here is is entirely level. Um, this this area, everything above the the top uh, wall that's shown on the plot plan is um, uh, it it's level ish, right? It is it's grass. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you put a tennis ball on it, it might roll a little bit, but it is. Um, uh, we we have barbecues out there, so it's no problem. Um, I would. Uh, yeah, I would note that there there is a um, this area that that's going to be in the, the the deck space today is a is a I don't know maybe it's about a four foot um, hill uh, that comes down and and that that hill would be uh, covered by the the extended deck um, okay. and and also to note that the um, the plans that you're seeing here are, are as exist. Um, we would, and we did uh, get approved by Conservation Commission, uh, a modification of the walls uh, that, that if you can see where my cursor are, um, to, to move this staircase uh, a little bit further uh, to, to make a, a little bit more of an open space between the uh, corner of the building uh, of the addition and uh, that existing staircase. Okay. Um. Yeah, so I visit. I did visit the property last week. Um, there's a remarkable view coming down Peabody Road, uh, looking out over Spy Pond. Um, but it looks like this addition will not significantly impact that view necessarily from up the street. Yes, correct. Certainly, um, you'll you'll see the the addition um, portion of it, but uh, we. we did everything we could to try to keep it 
relatively thin, if you will, narrow so that we, mm -hmm. we don't block the view because we we enjoy that view coming uh, up to the property as well. As um, do our neighbors. As do uh, obviously our neighbors. Yeah. All right. Um, so if I could go ahead and have you stop the share and then ask if there are other members of the board who have questions or comments. Mr. Chair. Mr. Gadelli. Uh, just one question for the applicant. Uh, we've run into a couple of uh, uh, proposals by Spy Pond that have access easements across their property. Uh, there's not um, an access easement across your property, is there? There is no access easement across our property, no. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and open this hearing for public comment. Public comment is taken as it relates to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of helping us inform our decision. Uh, if you are in Zoom, you may use the raise hand button on the reactions tab. If you're calling by phone, you can dial star nine. Uh, you'll be recognized by the chair, given time for your, uh, your questions and comments. Um, and if there are any documents that you wish to be viewed uh, while you're making your comments, please let us know. So with that, public comment is open uh, for the special permit hearing uh, for 36 Peabody Road. Uh, Mr. Bowes? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Uh I am the, my address is 26 Lakeview. I am the immediate above to the south side of the applicant's property. Uh, I'm speaking in favor of his uh, petition this evening. Uh, I contacted uh, Ian. He invited me over. We walked the property. He showed me his plans. Uh, we took out uh, tape measures. We measured things to my satisfaction. I think they uh, deserve this uh, approval. It's a nice addition. Uh, they take very good care of their property and they're very good neighbors and I'm here to speak in support. Thank you very much. appreciate you sticking with our hearing this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Are there other uh, members of the public who wish to address this hearing? See some clapping hands by uh, one other person. Um, Erwin Grossman. Grossman's Erwin Chair and Grossman from up the street, uh, 16 Peabody Road. And uh, we just want to say that uh, we're excited about the new addition and uh, approve um, of our great neighbors getting to, to build out their dream. Right. Thank you very much for that. Um, Matthew Shepard. Hi. Uh, apologize for continued clapping instead of <laughs> raising my hand. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm at um, 18 PPD Road. Uh, we are down the street and wanted to join the meeting to express our support for the addition. We appreciate their uh Acknowledging that the view from the street is important and keeping the addition so that it preserves that view. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to um, address this hearing? Going once, going twice. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close this uh, the public comment period for this hearing. Um, <clears throat> so what the board has before it is a, a special permit request uh, for a large addition um, under 542B6 in our zoning bylaw. Um, as we had uh, discussed on the, the prior hearing for this, there are particular, if there's a specific finding that the board needs to make in regards to a large addition, um, the board would need to find that the alteration or addition is in harmony with other structures and uses in the vicinity. Uh, to do so, it must consider the dimensions and setbacks in relation to abutting structures and uses 
and it must consider conformity with the purposes of the bylaw. Um, I've already read the purposes of the bylaw into the record this evening. I'm not going to do that a second time. Um, but I think that the um, you can go ahead and address the other um, aspects of the request. Um, <clears throat> So starting with the um, the findings of the special the specific special permit findings that are under section three three three, the board needs to find that the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Um, I think that the where this meets the requirements of the the purpose of the bylaw in terms of an orderly expansion of of, of property and and tax base. Uh, where this is a very modest um, addition that it was intended to minimize its impacts, especially on the the views of uh, their uh, neighbors, not only that are abutting neighbors, but also neighbors that are are on their street, um, is a that the that the ad adverse effects will certainly not be outweighed by its its beneficial um, impacts. The request the use is allowed or allowed by special permit. Um, so it's a single family house in a single family district. Um, the use is allowed. Uh, the requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience and welfare. Um, single family and single family is a, is the desired use. Um, this expansion of the house will be done in a, in a way that is, um, uh, minimizes the impact on, um, other, uh, neighbors and people in their neighborhood. Uh, the requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. Um, neither of those will be impacted by the addition to the right side of the house. Uh, will not overload any public system. Um, the addition will not significantly change the use of the, of the property um, in any way that would cause a change uh, that would be perceptible to the public systems. Uh, special regulations for the requested use are fulfilled. That would be um, the, the section on large edition 542B6, which we'll come back to. Uh, the, why the requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. Uh, I think that judging by the appearance of the uh, of the elevations that were provided with the application, um, the applicants have taken care to make sure that the, the addition they're proposing is uh, in keeping with the overall design of the existing house um, and will uh, not <clears throat> be of a of a character that would be that would sort of stand out in any negative fashion. Um, the requested use will not be detrimental to the public health or welfare. Uh, this allows a, a family um, that, by the statements of their neighbors, are well liked in the neighborhood, and um, it allows them to stay in their house, but at the same time to create a property that um, would be fitting for. Um, for themselves or for others who um, may occupy the, the property in the future. And <clears throat> the requested use will not cause uh, a use detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, this uh, It's a single family, a single family that you use is um, anticipated. Then the question on the large addition, so the alteration or addition is in harmony with other structures and uses in the vicinity. Um, as we've seen, this is a very uh, modest sized addition. Uh, it is proposed for um, the right side of the property, which has a significant amount of uh, setback to the property line. Um, the abutting neighbor to that side is, has spoken in favor of the project. Um, and um, the dimensions and setbacks um, are not adversely affected to any of the um, abutting uh, properties where it is of, of such a modest scale. And um, it would conform to the purpose of the bylaw in terms of uh, preservation um, of open space. It does preserve some sight lines um, and it does allow for an orderly expansion of the of the tax base of the town. Um, those are the findings as I see them. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Okay, then 
Um, should the board vote to approve this application, the board has the standard three conditions, which were read into the record earlier this evening. Um, are there any additional conditions which the board feels would be important uh, to include in a decision on this property? Seeing none. Chair will accept a motion on this docket. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, I move that the uh, board approve the application subject to the three standard conditions. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Holly. So this is a uh, vote of the ZBA to approve a special permit for 36 Peabody Street with the three conditions as moved by Mr. Hanlon, seconded by Mr. Holly. Um, a roll call vote of the board. Uh, Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. Chair votes aye. Uh, the special permit is approved. Thank you very much. I appreciate your patience. Thank you to the board and to all of our neighbors. Um, thank you for your uh, patience and your endurance. Thank you all. Take care. Good luck with your project. Okay, then this brings us to doc, uh, item eight on our agenda this evening, docket 379-649 Valentine Road. Um, we could ask the applicants to introduce themselves. I thank them for their patience this evening and if they could explain to us what they would like to do. Good evening. Uh, thank you to the board for uh, all of your time you're putting into this. Um, really appreciate it. Um, I'm Brian Crowley, one of the owners, uh, my wife, Elizabeth, the other. Uh, we are seeking to add a second driveway to our uh, front yard area. We have one now, uh, which basically holds two cars in, in tandem. Um, and we are looking to add a second driveway on the sort of the other side of our front yard. Uh, it would be about 10 feet wide by 25 feet um, long um, to the existing yard. I'm sorry, I don't have anything to um, to share with you. I did upload the the, um, the the plan for it as it pertains to the plot plan for the for the plot. I can certainly share that. Thank you. I appreciate that, Christian. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, this is the property here. There's an existing drive here on the left-hand side. Um, if I'm right, I think this predates that, that this addition has already been completed, that this is from an earlier That's iteration. Correct. That's okay. correct. Um, and so as you say, there's... So there's existing parking on this side and you're looking to do um, a driveway on this side as well. That's correct. Okay. Um, so one concern is, so uh, the board is allowed to approve a second driveway um, mm -hmm. as a special permit. Uh, they're not allowed to approve more than two driveways, um, but the part of the requirement requirement for the second driveway um, is that the driveway would have to meet all the requirements of the uh, zoning bylaw. Um, this is 6110. As it pertains to the, um, you know, the usable lot and, you know, open space, is that what you mean? So, um, uh, just as there's a finding by the or the development, the second drive or drive. Are you are you be are you able to see the the bylaw now? I can see what you have up. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, so the last line for. Uh, in no case may a second driveway for a single family, two family duplex or three family dwelling violate any other dimensional or density regulations for the district in which it's located. Um, so in the first part of A where it discusses 
uh, parking in residential districts for single family. Uh, off street parking shall not be permitted in the area between the front lot line and the minimum front setback, except on a driveway not exceeding 20 feet in width leading to the required parking space. So in the case here, we have a by the definition, this isn't actually a driveway. It's a parking space because it doesn't lead to a legal parking space. Um, if the driveway extended up into this portion of your yard mm -hmm. and there's a legal parking space past the 25 foot line, that would be approvable because that would be a driveway and this would be a legal parking space. But a driveway has to lead to a parking um it's, and i know you have a fence here and this is a part of your yard so i'm not sure if that was what you were thinking um you mean to extend it beyond that point yeah um no that point beyond there is a um we have like a an existing patio and there is oh, like okay fence there that kind of runs along the uh the front line of the of the house so it would sort of match what the driveway on the other side of the house is you know right mm -hmm. at the point of the um you know if you follow the front line of the house there on the other yep. side like what the existing driveway is um beyond that corner of the of the house there it's pretty much too narrow to really park so there's, that's not much of a, a driveway per se Okay. So it's a symmetrical situation. Um, yeah, because unfortunately, and I would ask others to consider this as well, I don't think this qualifies because it doesn't lead to a legal parking space and we're not allowed to approve a parking space within the front yard setback. Um, uh, could I just ask what some clarification? Yeah. And what you mean how it doesn't lead to a, a parking space um sure so um uh so for the off street parking shall not be permitted in the area between the front lot line and the minimum front yard setback so that's between so between the curb and the house mm -hmm. except on a driveway not exceeding 20 feet in width leading yep to the required parking space so it's this leading to the required parking space there a driveway has to go to a legal parking space um so i guess what what defines what a legal parking space is it mean it has to have like access to the house so to speak like and not just be like situated in the middle of the yard is that what you mean so it has to it just so the legal parking spaces has to be eight and a half by 18 and it has to be in the side or rear yard. So this is the front yard technically is the whole across the whole width. Mm -hmm. And so this is still considered within the front yard. So it's, you can't create a parking space in a front yard. You could create it in the side yard back here. Um, how would we get? Uh, how would you and get? And this driveway would lead to that parking space. So you basically you'd have a. It, it, it's just the way that it's written in the bylaws, but it, it's only a driveway if it leads to a parking space. Otherwise, it's just a. It's undefined. Okay, I guess my question would be: How is that different than our current driveway? Because that's basically the same thing on the other side. Right. So. In this case, this is existing, so it's an existing nonconformity. Um, it does go past the front edge of the house, so there the parking is not entirely within the front yard. I don't know the his history of how it came to be this way. Mm -hmm. um, most likely, the house was constructed before this was added to the zoning bylaw. Um, okay. One option you would have. Um, so you can have a driveway that's up to 20 feet wide. So right. I think you'd be able to expand the width of your existing driveway up to 20 feet. So that would give you 
this would still be considered driveway because it is leading to a parking space. Um, so I think that the, that, and this would not require a special permit because it's not a second driveway. It's just the expansion of the existing driveway. Um, if a configuration like this would work for you, I'd recommend talking to the building inspector about whether this is this could just be approved by right. I don't know if it would work at all with the way that your house is arranged. I know you haven't, you know, there's a driveway and there's a nice stone uh, walkway that leads yeah. down as well that this would absolutely yeah. interfere with. Right. Um, right. Right under like where your marker is right there. Well, more when it was in the yard. I think that's where a lot of the um, the service, you know, goes into the house, uh, okay. you know, gas and yeah. sewer. So I, I'd be a little weary of um, mm -hmm. you know, digging into that area. Um, so, yeah, I guess our our contention was that if we didn't want to disrupt that area mm -hmm. and we wanted additional areas to take cars off the street, you know, we have two now, uh, we have two daughters and in about five, you know, five, six years or so, they'll probably have a car to share. We would love to be able to minimize the amount of on-street parking that occurs you know we we see the effects of that daily on our mm -hmm. internet so um this seemed to be the yeah uh, option is valentine road a public way or a private way public it is public way okay mm -hmm. yeah we see a lot of traffic on it um yep. it's sort of a wider road but i feel like that actually engenders more parking on the street <laughs> um, because <laughs> it's so wide, um, yeah. which, you know, but we see a lot of traffic. Um, and when there's two cars parked on the road, especially when they're exactly opposite each other, it creates kind of a narrow bottleneck, so to speak. And unfortunately, a lot of people drive what I would consider <laughs> too fast. Um, yeah. So anything that we can do to minimize, I think, on-street parking is beneficial to the whole neighborhood. Mm -hmm safety pedestrians there's a lot of people that walk there's no sidewalks on the road there um, okay so you know when you see people almost get hit by <laughs> cars <laughs> it doesn't, uh, doesn't really sit well with us either so sure no absolutely um i would ask other members of the board if they see this differently um <clears throat> and, and and sorry to interrupt if no, it, please. it makes any difference on the um uh, the plot plan, which doesn't really show exactly from the from that proposed driveway, there there will be a, a walkway, so to speak, that mm -hmm. connects it to the front of the house. So I don't know okay. if that makes it any different in terms of the driveway parking space scenario you were discussing earlier. I'm going to ask other members of the board their sense on this. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanlon, um, I think that the chair really has it right that I mean, this sort of is unfortunate because the way the geometry works out, there's no alternatives that are both legal and attractive. But I don't that this portion of the bylaw is hard to read. But the one thing that's really clear is what it's trying to do is prevent people from building parking spaces in their front yards. And that's so, you know, when you sort of cut through all of the to a legal parking space, and I mean, that's what it is, basically, is you have to go through the part, front yard to someplace else where you either have a garage or whether you have a legal a legal parking space in a rear or a side yard, but you can't just stick it in the front yard. Hmm. Um, I recommend that. I don't know if you've had a, an opportunity to to talk with the building inspector um, about options. Um, if you haven't, I would recommend you probably do that um, to see if you can work something out with with him that is a is a in a format that we can approve. Unfortunately, we really can't um, approve what you're recommending, what you're requesting. And is that because the fact that the proposed driveway doesn't extend into a, a side yard? So if theoretically, 
I'm not saying we would do this yeah. necessarily, but um, as you point out, we have a fence there. If we were to theoretically knock that down and extend that driveway all the way up to the side of the house, then it would be sort of approvable. Is that what I'm understanding? So then we then we could at least discuss it. Yeah. So that would be that would meet the requirements for a, for a driveway. Um, okay. Unfortunately, that, no. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I was going to say, as it is now, it, it unfortunately doesn't meet the requirement, so it would not. Um, you know, it's not something that we would be able to approve as by a special permit. Okay. Um, so I guess, you know, what would our, our only recourse here would be to. So you have a couple, I think you have, I think you have a few options. Um, so you could con consider widening the first part, the first part of your existing driveway to see if that would provide you with the additional space you need. Um, you could, cons and that you could probably do by, that would not require action by this board, I don't think. Um, you could ex extend the proposed driveway on the right-hand side along the side of the house so that there's a, a space that's at least eight and a half by 18 past the front, past the 25 foot line from the curb, from the, uh, front lot line um and that would then qualify as a driveway with a park leading to parking um and then that's something the board could approve by special permit so we would still need to to go through the full process of whether um whether it meets the criteria for a special permit um the third option is you could um where the you could apply for a variance um, to have the parking space as you're showing it, um, but a variance requires very specific findings um, that there is something unique about the property that leads, that makes it so that you cannot uh, conform with the requirements of the zoning bylaw, um, which is a very, it's a, intentionally it, under state law, it's a very strict, um, set of criteria to, to meet. Um, and I, it would, um, you know, it, it was, I, from my perspective, it would be sort of the last resort thing you would ask for, but just because um, the criteria are so stringent for it. Um, Do you, I'm, your, your thoughts, you know, if extending the driveway wider, the existing driveway would interfere mm -hmm. with, as I said, those services, you know, gas and sewer. I, all. I would hope that those would be deep enough that they wouldn't be impacted. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, it looks like there's like, and there's overhead cable, overhead wires that come in over the driveway. Um, but I know that right under there is where the, um, you know, the main sewer line out is and, I'm pretty sure the, um, I, I think, you know, cause when we did the, um, our addition before we had to, you know, increase the gas service and they dug a trench like right under, like exactly where that was. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why we didn't want to necessarily pursue widening it right there. Mm -hmm. Um, I th think I would ask the, the other architects on the board, it, it, like if you were to call dig safe is that a is that a free call i believe so yes um i can't i can't remember what the phone number is for dig safe but basically the utility companies will send somebody out and they will mark out exactly where all the utilities are and how deep they they can tell you how deep they are mm -hmm. and so that would give you a good sense as to whether or not and it's a free service because they don't want you accidentally digging into their stuff either so um that would give you a better sense as to where their stuff is. And then you could see if it makes sense for you to put a driveway over the top of it. And the person who, the service person who comes would probably have a, a sense of that as well as to whether or not you could put a driveway, put a, you know, a, a driveway over the top of it. Right. And Mr. Chair, if I could have something that, uh, yeah. you know, typically uh, they have a, a required amount of cover on underneath the, you know, ground, mm -hmm. uh, just so that it doesn't freeze and thaw and, you know, mess up the pipes. So uh, th they're typically not, you know, right at the surface level. Um, 
So uh, I can't I can't say uh, whether this would be a good application, but you could certainly call and get someone to tell you. Okay. But aside from that, no other real recourse there, and no special like you know request in a sense. I mean, I I guess you know my my thought is you know if we have the driveway we have now is um, you know two cars parked there. If the idea is to not have cars sort of in the front yard, um, yeah, there's cars there <laughs> basically anyway. Um, right. so I, I guess I don't really, and if it's a, a matter of you know the aesthetic appeal, um, you know, I guess you know, I'd welcome anyone to drive by our house and, and take a look. It's, it's, uh, we've done a lot of work to it to make it look very nice, and you know, it's, uh, I really don't think it would detract at all. If anything, it would add because that area, but the lawn never grows grass or anything anyway. Uh, there's pine trees in our neighbors next door, and it <laughs> ah. anything to grow there. Um, so I don't know if that was the if that's the intent is for you know the overall look of the the street, the neighborhood, etc. Yeah. No, unfortunately, the 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 bylaw is the bylaw for better or for worse. Um, and I, I think, unfortunately, the, uh, the circumstance, it really is, it doesn't do you any favors. Yeah, I guess I thought that's what the special appeal was for, to sort of like. Uh... So a variance, so the, the special permit allows us to do things that the bylaw says we can do by special permit. So we can approve a second driveway, but that driveway has to meet the requirements of a driveway, um, which unfortunately this doesn't. Um, a variance allows the board to do things that are like, not allowed typically under the zoning bylaw, but there, there, there are very specific criteria that have to be met in order for us to be allowed to approve those. I see. Um, and so that's a so I I would I would certainly recommend talking to the building inspector, uh, talking to the commissioner of buildings about the what you're looking to do and see if they if he has any better ideas um, on what might be approvable. Um, and then, you know, we're certainly happy to continue, um, this hearing. So it just, it, it'll stay open. Um, and, you know, we can either do it, we can either delay, if we could do it for, to the, our next hearing, which would be May 28th, or we could push until, it's, I think June 5th, June 9th, whatever that first date is in June. Um, I have it written down. Is that where a variance would come into play or that's an entirely different so that would be a different thing yeah june 11th is the yeah may 20th june 11th if it was to be a variance unfortunately a variance it would need to be re-advertised um is typically our our typical is that if you've applied for a variance and we find that it can be approved by special permit we will usually do that because it's a less stringent set of criteria um but if it's a variance, we do, it does need to be advertised as a variance because it is a more uh, a more stringent ask than just a special permit. I see. Um, that's something you could work out. Yes, uh, yes, Pat. I, I would, I just, I mean, the, Mr. Crowley needs to understand that a variance is a little bit like a Hail Mary would pass when you're more than one touchdown down. It, it's exceedingly difficult to get a variance that when you, the chair talks about specific conditions before you even get to the to whether it's a good idea you have to get behind get beyond that it has to be related to the shape or the topography uh or one other thing that's like that uh to the of the land yes, which would be almost impossible to meet here and and then it would have to kind of qualify as a severe hardship which possibly would be hard to meet. So variances are just not freely available for dealing with situations where the bylaw doesn't make sense. They're very, very narrow. And we denied mo almost all of them. It's, okay. We approved one tonight, but we deny them mostly. So I, I mean, you really are at, at your last, the last, your last straw if if you get there and it, i i don't know that it'll be up to you to figure out with with your advisors how to whether that makes any sense for you but you shouldn't really think of it as being an alternative that offers much hope i see 
Yeah, thanks for that input. Yeah, I have no experience with them, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so if, if you'd be willing to talk to the building inspector and then come back, um, I think we would, we could grant you a continuance um, to a, <clears throat> either the 28th or June 11th. And then, um, you know, if the building inspector has a great idea and there's something that we can, we can help, help you with, we will definitely do that. Um, or if you f go an alternate route, in which case it doesn't need a special permit, um, then you just let us know that you'd like to withdraw and we'll withdraw the application. We can withdraw the, we can vote to withdraw the application. Okay. I guess we'll, we'll go that way. I mean, I don't, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what other options there are, but I'm, I'm happy to discuss with, with him. So I guess we can do okay. that. I'll let you know if, uh, if we opt to, uh, you know, want to remove the, that second hearing. Yeah. So do you want to go May 28th or June 11th? Uh, we'll do the 28th. Okay. So this would be a motion to continue the special permit hearing for 49 Valentine Road until Tuesday, May 28th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Okay. Okay, so moved. So moved, Mr. Hanlon, and a second? Second. Mr. Holly. Uh, and as a, because you would be a continuance, you would actually get to go first. You wouldn't be stuck waiting for us until 11 o'clock at night. Um, <laughs> so vote, uh, roll call vote of the board to continue. Uh, Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. The chair votes aye. So we are continued on 49 Valentine Road until uh, Tuesday, May 28th. Okay. We'll see. Well, thank, you, thank you so much. Um, and look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Okay. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah, good thank night. You too. Bye. Uh, so that is the last item on our official agenda. Um, <clears throat> so as mentioned, we have... Uh, Hearings the uh, May twenty eighth, June eleventh, June twenty fifth, July 9th. Those are the next four dates. Um, Colleen, do we have business on those nights? Um, as of today, the next one I have that I can get ready will not be until the second uh, Tuesday in June. Oh, okay. So we have so two con continuances on the twenty eighth, plus three actually, and mm -hmm. then nothing for the eleventh. Okay. So three continuances on the 28th, nothing for the 11th yet. All right. Yet is important. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Um, yeah, so that's where we are. Town meeting is, I think all the zoning articles have been voted on at town meeting. I can't remember. I think uh, so. so most of the stuff that, so the, the definition of attached is going is changed now. So um, attached means it's attached by a wall or a roof, and detached means it doesn't meet the definition of attached. So the, the gap between the two has been removed. Um, the section on ADUs, the bullet points, those are now letters. Um, trying to remember what the other ones were that we had asked for. Mm -hmm. There was the removal of the overland of the uh, wetlands overlay, overlay district, which failed. Which failed, yeah. So the wetlands overlay district remains. Uh, a couple of other things, but there I just was can't remember. Off one that I forgot that passed. That was easy. Yeah, but still had opposition by one person, which was strange. But yeah, some people just have to oppose everything. Well, somebody even actually opposed substituting letters for bullets yes <laughs> come spend an hour in the building department you'll love what you hear <sighs> <laughs> all righty well that is all we have for tonight and it's quarter past 11 
So I would like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I'd especially like to thank Colleen Ralston, Mike Champa, Claire Ricker, Marissa Lau, uh, Jacqueline Munson, and Mike Cunningham for their assistance in preparing for and hosting our online meetings. Please note the purpose of the board's recording the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of its proceedings. It's our understanding the recordings made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. The second. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. LeBlanc. So vote to adjourn. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Hawley. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Uh, Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. And the chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Uh, Colleen and Elaine, do you want us to sing you happy birthday a couple minutes? <laughs> <laughs> no, ending 45 minutes earlier is a uh, gift enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. That uh, happy birthday to you both, and uh, we'll see everyone Thank in a couple of weeks, you. and Pat will see you tomorrow night. Okay, good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.